Right, hitting the live. Okay, so we are live with another day with Zendler. Now, as promised, uh, we're actually doing a day on how we ran the summit. So we have lots of the team members that were involved, the main team members that were involved in the summit. We've got Alice that planned the whole thing and coordinated it all. So she is up at 3 a.m. for you guys. So, yeah. you know, give a, a little bit of love in the chat when you watch this or on re replay because 3 a.m., that's a pretty, pretty impressive, isn't it? <laughs> so we also have... Mam eats in. She's in India. So she's there. She's five hours, five or seven hours ahead of us. Seven, I think. So she's ahead of us. We got Liz in as well. Liz can't stay long because she's got her daughter. So she's in for about an hour. So she's just coming in to support us because, again, she was doing quite a lot with the summit as well. So we will be referring to lots of the team members, even if they're not on the channel. OK, so we have the summit. The summit was um, successful. There was a main goal with the summit, and that was because we wanted to run challenges. And although we have taught a lot of people and um, Alice, for instance, has run summits herself, and that's why she was coordinating the whole thing, uh, as well as lots of lives and camps and things she's done. Um, we wanted to actually run it ourselves using just the Zenla tools. So. That's what we did. So we set out to do it. We've we've looked at a lot of um, other people's summits that they've run, and um, we've actually helped them uh, set up and how to best run a summit themselves. Some of the features were not included when we were showing some of the instructors how to set up their summit that are included now. So such as live classes, which was the big one that we used. Now, the thing about this is there's a ton of ways to run a summit. So we had we were brainstorming for quite a few weeks thinking how would be the best way of doing it. And we've chosen one way of doing it. It doesn't mean it's the only way. And we might well revise things. There was a lot of things that come out of the summit um, just using the Zenla tools that we might change next time. So we have a sort of a synopsis at the end um, about five o'clock this afternoon on maybe things we change or do things differently, or we might change things completely and show you a different way of running a summit. So there are all loads of things. Technically, the planning as usual, uh, and this is why Alice was involved in it a lot doing all of this stuff, because the actual planning and the strategy for it is the hardest part. Uh, hands down to actually set the summit up, as you will see when I do my deep dive section later this morning at about 11 o'clock, you're going to see that it's actually really quick to set it up. But the planning is the key here. So Alice was in control of it, run it all. It was successful. Our main goal was to run the summit so we could show you how we uh, we could actually run challenges and show you how we put it all together. That was our main purpose. So we weren't we weren't massively promoting it, but we did promote it and we promoted it because we wanted to show you how we do that side of things as well. If we were paying for adverts and things uh, and actually charging for the summit, which obviously we were not charging. So that was how it was all set up. So this is what a day with Zenla is all about today. And I'm going to just hand over to Alice. And uh, yeah, any guys, do you want to say anything? Do you want to add to this? Mm -hmm. <laughs> we got a woo -hoo. <laughs> right you know guys a day was they're very informal so we just chat about things and you can ask questions in the chat please ask questions as we're running through things there might be things you need and it's also good to see your questions because we can include those in challenges that we do as well so your feedback is crucial for um making the challenges even better than they will be all right alice so i'm going to hand over to you and Chat. Chat. <laughs> Sounds good. Sounds good. Um, so yeah, it was it was a very, I'm very excited for a day with Zendler today to talk about what that process is because we do get a lot of questions um around running an event. Sometimes it might be a summit, sometimes it might be some sort of a VIP day. There's something special that someone wants to do and 
even though the process for a summit might be a little bit longer of a process than some other like smaller special events, a lot of the process, a lot of the steps are the same when it comes to the planning side of things. And, and with all the questions that we get, um, I think that's why we wanted to run the challenge, right, David, is because we do get so many questions and so many people talking about it. So having gone through the process ourselves first, we felt would be better for running the challenge, which David and I will be doing soon. <laughs> I heard it. <laughs> which, that, which that'll be coming very soon as well. So, um, shh. <laughs> <laughs> so that'll be coming soon. So it'll be very, it'll be very, very good. And, and what made it even more fun was that the team did a lot of the things together and how, and David and I talk about this a lot too, when we do things, how we each all have our own, um, individual perspectives and, um, and experiences that we bring to the table. And that just, I feel like that just makes it everything better. Like when you have that collaboration piece in there and everybody can pitch in with their experience and expertise and it just makes everything better. I just love that part of it. Yeah, there was a lot of ideas that came out of it, wasn't there for sure? Yeah. Um, we, were, we were battering around different ideas because you know we've all got different slants on things and how things are going to run and who is going to run things as well. So there was a lot of that. Um, again, it's planning. Um, it's, you need someone in charge of it for sure. So Alice had to just run it. Um, sometimes she had to, it's like, there's so many questions coming in at different angles. At the end of the day, Alice has got to make a decision uh, because she's running it all. So she did. Exactly. But it was good to have everybody's ideas and help, right? Having the help and support of, of the team and, um, and that feedback is really, was really important, I think, to the process. So, and the wrap up stuff. So yeah, I know having, having the support was good, especially because we are crazy and <laughs> we did a live summit um, which there are, there are some live summits out there, but most, a lot of summits, and you may even decide if you want to do a summit that it pre-recorded is better for you because there's a little less management involved. Um, but with a live summit, there's a lot of management and like literally the whole team was doing that for like the summit ran for 12 hours, but obviously we we're doing some stuff before and, you know, and plus the follow up after. So even on the day of, it was a solid, easy 13 hours of like, we're on it. Right. And all of us together because it was live. So, yeah, like, I don't know. I don't know what I would have done without, um, without man meat and, and Liz helping me on one end. And then of course, David made sure all the tech picks were, or we wouldn't have been live at all. So <laughs> he made sure we could show up there. Absolutely. And I think like Alice is mentioning what was happening, like one speaker was speaking for the users, they were listening to that speaker. But just on the back end, it was me or Liz taking the next speaker into the breakout room, doing the audio check, simultaneously things happening. And the run, the summit was so smooth and on the screen, it was one speaker. So a lot was going on the back end with everybody in one session. Mm hmm yeah back to back sessions oh we got um oh, yeah. we got angela in angela was one of our key speakers Hi, did an amazing job she we is. love angela she's been yes. on the day with zenla many times and we also have uh jacob as well he's on he liked it so he's saying morning so we got a few people turning up which is really nice uh so Angela's right. right. Hi. Hi, Angela. Yeah. So, um, yeah, well, there was also some things that you guys didn't see. And this is what is going to be quite interesting for you. And um, we're going to show that on the deep dive uh, section of this. Like that's happening at 11 o'clock. So we're going to be showing you what we would have done um, had things of not uh, basically gone outside of the system. 
So when I mean outside of the system is that we had a maximum of 500 attendees could go in. But if we actually got 600, then there would only be 500 in there. And what happens to those hundreds, especially with a free event where people can drop in. So we had an allowance. We had a backup plan for that. Um, we were running that and testing it out. Um, luckily, we didn't have to use it because the first session, it kind of broke for me. <laughs> you don't need to know that, but it did. But <laughs> the, the other sessions, it actually worked perfectly fine. But that's that's something that happens from a technical point of view. And probably if I knew more people were coming in, I would have base tested that a bit more. Uh, made sure my internet speed was capable of um, doing simultaneous streams and things like that. So there were things that went wrong, and we're going to talk about that right at the end, uh, but you didn't see it. You know, it was basically me. <laughs> so I'm <laughs> glad I wasn't on there. So this is all part of it. You know, we wanted to run it. It will run successfully. And that's all we that's all we cared about was it running successfully. And we still had interaction going on in the chat as well. So it was brilliant. It was a really good day. It was hard work, though, wasn't it, guys? You guys were on it all day. Mm -hmm. At least I could have some breaks. <laughs> yeah, I slept for like two days afterwards. I was just, <laughs> <laughs> I was like, done. <laughs> because that also was like three, I was getting up at 3 a.m. Like David Zendler, like right now, it's four, just after 4 a.m. for me. So. You know, but I need to get up, have coffee, you know. So yeah, it was a it's a long, it's a long day. And but it was worth it. It was also a lot of fun. Yeah, I, I suppose, you know, you're highlighting there the fact that it's better to have a team of people, you know, a few people backing you up as well. Because imagine if you were trying to do this all on your own, you could do it. Um, mm -hmm. that's that's possible but to have a co-host with you at least one is always a good thing even if they're handling the chat or something you know so and as alice said all of our stuff was live yeah you know so we could have gone we could have gone the route of doing some pre-recordings and putting them all up with the speakers doing that and we could have edited them but we had everything you know we had people live streaming in we didn't know they were checking like liz and mammy were checking the quality of the stream feeds and things like that but obviously recorded content is a lot sharper but we didn't want to go that route we wanted to do the whole thing live uh, so that's why we did it and that's why we had extra team members monitoring setting up breakout rooms and letting people in and setting the, the session up because they were running back to back so even before we'd finished the session the next one had started so we had to make sure we wrapped things up so that we could the next session and the people could jump across so that mm. was also <laughs> technically that's <laughs> quite difficult so, <laughs> absolutely and it is when you're doing a when you're doing a bigger event and uh, especially live oh having support is a really big deal like it it can be when you're pre-recording it if you give yourself enough lead time and planning time which we'll talk about to a little later um you know then it's possible to do it yourself but that's it's a lot it's a big commitment and for you our members as business owners that's one of the things you have to realize is in that planning process and in the running it process that you also have a business you the speakers that you're bringing into that event who will likely need to do promotional things to have people sign up for the summit as well um you also have businesses to run outside of the fact that you have this summit going on and so that planning piece becomes very important so that you can make sure your business still has some its proper things happening while you're also running this event especially if you are trying to do it solo um i do always recommend getting help even if it's a va um, that's helping you out with it but i always do recommend getting help because it is a lot and there's probably a lot of things people don't think about in the planning process that become more important and you're like oh should have thought of that <laughs> you know it becomes a little more important yeah there's um yeah for sh for instance like i can give you a, a, a couple of examples here one is that if you start recording it and you are hosting it and you have people come in and out and um and then your internet stops or breaks that's it mm -hmm. it's all over just closes 
So doing things like make at least <clears throat> making sure one of your guests on there is a co-host means that even if it does stop, they will become the co-host and you can jump back in and swap the title back over. That's something people miss because internets do stop. You might have a thunderstorm and it just takes the uh, internet out or causes a disruption in the line. So these are things. Another one is that people often will not, uh, will have their like phones and everything else uh, on their desks and they'll start ringing in the middle of it. So you need to clear all that out and make sure it's a nice um, soundproofed environment that you're working in. So these are things that can happen or you've got someone banging pots in the background, you know, everyone needs to have, this is the planning stage. And these are things that can happen live. You've got no control over them, you know, <laughs> like a seagull could fly in through your window or something. Right, so dog jumps in your lap, starts barking. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's very likely to happen here in uh, St. Yeah. I, you know, <laughs> a seagull could easily just shoot straight through. So shut the window, you know, these are things that you do. <laughs> But people don't think of those things, do they, Alice? It's like I know you're going to bring up lots of things where where you're planning and stuff and showing these things, but that's that's something that people don't think of. Um, yeah, sure. And I think the big one is the the line. You know, if you've got one of them, one of your speakers as a co-host, you're not going to lose them. So it's a a little golden nugget of information for you there. Absolutely. You On live, yes, you have to have. We had backup plans and we had backups of our backup plans, okay? Like we were not leaving anything to chance. And I think, yeah, always have backup plans. And there's always going to be something that you didn't think of. Always, always going to happen because we're human. So that happens. We're not, we're not perfect. We cannot think of all the things. And when it happens, you just have to be like, yeah, let's, you just have to embrace the Zen of it and just say it is it's we're live. Whatever happens today happens today. We're going with it. It doesn't matter. And just, yeah. And just let it happen. Just let it roll and you do the best you can. If you've prepared, if you've done the planning, if you've done the backups, if you've done all of that, then you've done what you can and you're just on with your summit. That's it. That's what you've got to do. Um, because the other thing is you have to be able to like relax and enjoy the process, right. Of interacting with people. If you're all frazzled and like, oh gosh, what's happening, then you won't, you'll miss out on the experience and you'll miss out on giving your attendees a good experience too, because they can see and feel that frazzledness, right? And that's not the impression that you want to give on a summit. So you just have to say, well, this is where we're at and we're going with it and have fun with it. And people are generally I feel like very understanding. Like, I mean, maybe we're spoiled at Zendler because we have like the most fabulous community on all of the internet, right? Maybe that's the case. Um, but I feel like people are generally really kind and supportive and they're coming to your event. They want your event to be successful. They want you to be successful. And they understand that things like little things happen, right? So when something happens and like, oh, the dog barks or jumps in your lap, like those are funny moments that they got to experience live. And it's relatable because they also are human beings that have like stuff happening all the time too. So I think it just makes you even more relatable when those little glitchy things happen and and yeah, people are generally very understanding. So at a certain point from the planning process, you just have to say whatever happens now happens now. And that's what we're doing. <laughs> and just, I feel like Liz could talk a lot about that kind of thing too. Like just go with it. <laughs> Calm down. Well, yeah, Liz is doing a motivational Monday. So you're going to hear more about how to prepare for these, for summits and things like that. Just calming things. So that should be really good. Um, yeah, so like you were saying, like sometimes I sometimes think that like if if people run a, a summit and it's really clean, really slick, that's good. But people will remember if something funny happens in a summit, like something goes wrong, they will remember it. So in that case, they're remembering the summit. You know, they're remembering something that happened in the summit. If it's just slick and it goes through and it looks really professional, people don't 
remember those you know they might remember key bits from it but they don't remember those they're more likely to remember something if something goes completely wrong <laughs> that's me anyway because it's just like you know you just do it's like bloopers isn't it on the news and things like that you just that's the bit you remember <laughs> <laughs> exactly exactly it makes it more relatable makes it more memorable definitely yeah all right so we're ready to start now um the presentation like we said it's very um we're very relaxed here so it runs as long as it runs and when we finish we finish so we're not strictly staying with six hours it might run more it might run less so we're not holding ourselves to exactly those time time frames hi kevin kevin's in good to see you kevin so uh kevin was in in the end part of the summit as well he popped on so that was really good um, he had a really busy time. He was doing championships and things on that summit day, so he couldn't attend more of the sessions. But good to see you, Kevin. Uh, so, Alice, shall we hand over to you? You want me to share the screen, should I? If, if you like. Do that bit for the the slides. Is that what you want me to do? Yeah. Control the slides. Yeah, let's run there through we go. the first part here. Yes, there. So behind the scenes right from the live at, from the last summit that we ran and introduction which did we well, that's what we just did right we did that yeah okay. yeah <laughs> I should okay. have run. <laughs> it is a special day with Zenla. yeah we it is that. it is <laughs> it is idea purpose i mean we covered that a little bit um the idea and the purpose of the Zendler Summit was because there was a lot of it where we did want to um, be able to run a summit and then be able to do that challenge with you all based on our experience having run the summit, even though we'd had other folks, as David mentioned, where we were giving them feedback and helping them with their summits, we wanted to be able to do one as well. And as Zemler was growing, um, we also wanted to uh, do a summit around a specific idea. And that was that live aspect of digital business because with Zendler being an all-in-one course platform, uh, sales, marketing, engagement, and that live management piece, which is growing and growing even more importantly online for today's business owners. It's even more important to have that, which is kind of a big piece of that engagement, right? Having communities in Zendler, um, having that engagement and having that live interaction with people, even virtually, uh, is becoming more and more important in business today. So that was also making sure that running the summit was great tool and resource that we can share our experience with you, but also that the summit itself had a valuable purpose and content to it as well, that you would be able to have this other learning experience from it too, even if you weren't interested in running a summit, right? You know, which is that, you know, dual purpose of why we choose, because at Zendler, uh, we are obsessed with support. And you see that in all of the trainings and the tools and the resources that um, that we have and have it done in a way that benefits all of our members in a variety of ways. And the summit was really no different for us. We wanted to make sure that that content was in there, that you'd be able to to learn from it on top of the fact that you were going to learn from this part of it behind the scenes as well right so that that is an epic level of educational support right there <laughs> right yes 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 yeah absolutely uh yeah i'm sharing this um this slide so um just tell me when to move on uh, alice Okay, okay, good. Thank you very much, David. Oh, yeah, you did full screen. Um, so yeah, so, and focusing on that live aspect, like I said, that was because we were growing um, in the summit, right? We were growing that idea of the live management. And on the summit, we did have like special announcements of 
more additions to Zendler based on that live aspect as well. Um, so it was really, it was really good, that live aspect. Um, and this is the perfect um, segue. Our speakers were all members of Zendler, of our community, people who were using the system already. And the idea is that they would come on and they would share their experience of how they interact live with their communities, with their audience, with their students. Um, and you would be able to learn from people who were in the same position as you and that they weren't necessarily expert speakers, um, but they were just members of the community and you could learn from them. Kind of like the aspect of the team sort of working together and planning the educational team and how um, each of our experiences contributed to this planning process and, and working together in that way. You as a community, we wanted to give you that opportunity to also learn from each other and each other's experiences, um, which just, I think, I think that always collaboration, um, connection with others, learning from others' experiences, I always think that makes everything better. And so having the speakers from our own community, I thought was just um, that just made, I think, our summit even more special. Yeah, I, th I think so. It's um, with, That was one of our main things was making sure that we had Zenla users um, actually on this summit. Mm -hmm. Because also the other side is some of those Zenla users, you will have seen them on the day with Zenla. And you'll see that they, that's what they do. They do they do lives. That's that's part of their business. So, but it's nice to have a cross section. So we had a cross section of people that don't particularly, you know, don't use live all the time, but use it part of their business. They're not used to doing like things like summits or live stream sessions or those things. So it's nice to see a real broad uh, cross section of the community, you know, and. Um, that's what makes it really nice. You know, it's it's really good. The other thing is, of course, you get to you get to know me, um, see these members, and you know, it just builds a tighter community. It's already super friendly, but it makes it even friendlier for people, especially for new people coming in. They can see all this stuff going on, and they're like, "Wow, all these people are actually part of Zenla almost." You know, you you are part of Zenla. You're part of the Zenla family. So, and that was really important to us, wasn't that, guys? Absolutely. And I also <clears throat> feel adding to this that uh, since all the speakers were from the community, there was also a lot of diverse topics and trainings that we got from a perfect podcast to the live evergreen summit that Tracy shared and then uh, the absolutely wonderful presentation by Harvard. And there was so much inside the community that when the speakers came forward, we got to know that who's doing what and the diverse level of training that we could get on the day of the summit. So I think that was absolutely amazing to have all that information and training from within the community itself. Yeah, I, I think also what was really interesting is how everybody was using live in such a different way. And I know, you know, since the summit, lots of people have been picking up and going, oh, I didn't realize you could do it this way. And so by getting all those different perspectives of our awesome members, you know, really added to it because they were doing things that maybe we hadn't even thought of doing. So it's just that collective, like David said at the beginning, the collective brainstorming we had planning. And then you add in all of our community speakers, you get the extra perspectives as well. And each of these things were done with Zenla. So you can totally do it too. Yeah, brilliant. Yeah, that's um, that's well said. Uh, that's the thing we did. Um, we were like saying at the beginning, you know, we're running this in one way, but all our members are running things in different ways. So they're picking up, we're picking knowledge up from them. Uh, they're picking up from us. And that's how it works. We get that. I mean, if all of our tutorials, everything is driven, all of our boot camps that we do, that we run, it's all driven by you, by your feedback through the posts that we see in the Facebook group or you feeding back to us. So it is. So it's really important that we do that because then it just goes full circle and everything's working as it should do. Uh, yeah. Shall I move on, Alice? Yes. Um, okay. So the timeline. So this is a really important piece of planning an event. Now the 
the planning process, really the minimum should be four to six months out. Now, you can add time to that depending on, you know, how big of an event you're doing, how many speakers you want, how many days your event's going to run. Um, <clears throat> is it going to run live? So there's a lot of little pieces that you have to um, sort of know when you're looking at your timeline, because things that you need to consider is that you need time to gather up the speakers. You need time to make sure that they have the right kind of talk um, ready and available, whether they're recording it or they're sending you over um, maybe a snippet of their presentation or um, an outline of their presentation um, so that you can see, you know, what that looks like. Um, you also have to like get all this information for promotional materials for yourself, but also for your speakers, and they have to put it on their calendar. Now, some folks have like their promotional calendars uh, planned out like three to six months in advance. So if they're going to participate in your summit, they need to know that and be prepared with the content that they're going to be promoting for your summit at least that far in advance. So different people have different processes. Now, sure, there are plenty of businesses that don't have it planned out in that far in advance that um, that will just add in a promotional thing wherever. But some are very like, you know, they may already be booked on different things and have different things going on that far in advance. Like, um, podcast. Sometimes I've been a podcast guest and been on a podcast and that episode doesn't air for like six, eight, nine weeks. Right. So it's everything. People do everything ahead in their planning. And that's why an event as important as a summit requires that sort of four to six month time frame to give you the buffer to plan it out, to give yourself and your speakers, the buffer to be able to create and have the proper promotional time uh, for a summit, especially if you're using it as a moneymaker for your business. Um, at Zendler, everything we do, and we've committed this, that everything is free. So, but for you as a course creator, as a membership um, program leader, um, as a coach, whatever that is that you're doing, a trainer, a teacher, you're there, you're there to make money for your business. So having ticket sales, having things like that available to make money in your summit might be a big part of it. So you're going to want to make sure that you have the right timings to plan all of that, um, to plan all of that stuff out. So what we started with um, registration, we started with um, the speaker recruitment aspect of it. Um, and that started a really long time ago, the, the process of planning that. Um, you have to figure out um, uh, what your application process is going to be like beforehand, what kind of requirements you might have. Like for us, our requirements were actually kind of simple. Uh, first of all, you had to be part of the Zendler community, right? So that was a requirement. So we had to map stuff like that out um before even before we could get to the speaker um recruitment aspect of it but then reach out to people that we knew um in order to find speakers that we wanted um in the summit and then after that we did a bit of public promo for speaker call as well. And some people just do a public speaker call and some people do the private. I kind of like privately inviting specific people first. Um, that's always my recommendation when you're looking for speakers, when you're looking for podcast guests, when you're, you know, just doing a general post in social media, like you have no idea who's applying. Like you may know some of the people that apply for that, right? But you're getting a lot of like, the process for vetting that person is longer 
than it is when you're working with people you know. <laughs> so, and it's a little scarier, right? Like here you are running this really important event for your business and here's a stranger. Let's just invite them into my business, right? So, um, so public posting general calls, I'm kind of in about it. I don't know how you all feel about that. Um, yeah, Liz, I, Demi, David. Yeah, yeah, I agree, absolutely, because like it, you'll notice also we we we're kind of re well, we're reusing people i don't mean in a bad way but we're kind of like we were looking at people that were on a david zendler because we they've done the presentations you know on a david zendler and some of them have been on multiple times and we knew the quality of what they were doing so we knew the quality of their webcams their setup um how well they did with all that stuff and so they those for us were targets straight away we contact them and say look come on can you come on because we knew it was going to be good now if you're like alice was saying you don't know who it is especially if it's off the platform then we don't know what they're going to do people can <laughs> could just do a promotion just have all their stuff in the background and all that we, you try and eliminate that but if they're live and it's happening you can't re you can't just stop them you know so if it's a stranger they could do these things and you'd have no control of it even if they've signed a thing they might still have a thing come up and uh you know in the gray area that is um that is the signature to the terms and conditions in this gray area and people are really good at finding gray areas where they can exploit things so you and if you don't know them then you don't know what they're like whereas with us we were trying to find and as alice said you we're first of all reaching out to people we know and then we're doing an open call to people and we're basing it um on on them sort of like doing interviews and things like that so obviously like alice was saying it takes a lot longer to to plan all those things so that the application timeline and registration is takes a lot of work, uh, which you guys did. I I didn't really have a lot to do with it. I put some names forwards. You know, we that's that was part of it. We all put names forwards to people we thought would be good good on the summit on this particular summit because it was all about the live aspect. So if it was a if it was a different thing, if it was course creators or you know doing using page builder or building a site using Zenla, then we probably have a different call of people that we would we would reach out to because they would be specific to that area. So that's another thing as well, making sure the topic is on topic, you know? So yeah, guys. Would you yeah, I think uh, I would like to go with the mix like Alice mentioned. I uh, This is from my experience. I feel if there is a mix of we invite people that we already know, we are familiar with, and then we also give a chance to people uh, to apply. And then uh, the events that I've spoken at, I think I was able to speak at those events because I got a chance to apply. I didn't have them in my network. So if they didn't give me a chance to apply, I wouldn't have got that opportunity. So, But there was one thing different in that event that I was supposed to submit a recording of what I'm going to speak and they would approve it and then they would finalize me as a speaker and of course the terms and conditions that go in hand that whatever you've submitted the recording that you've submitted you have to stick to it and you know the other legal actions can come in place so I think doing it the right way is the way ahead but I feel a mix would be uh, good enough uh, this is my personal uh, experience so that people who do not have a network get a chance to reach out to brands that speak at events yeah I, I think also it depends what your goal is, you know, for the summit. So if your goal is to, you know, expand your network, then to invite people to apply that aren't in your network is going to support you with that. But if it's, you know, to give something of amazing quality where you know the speakers, then you're going to be inviting people. And I love, Mammy, where you said, you know, it being open, you then get to show what are you actually going to be doing and then there's that approval process. And I think, you know, although David, when it's live, it's more difficult to come in. If someone is doing something that's completely inappropriate, you can always cut their live. So you always have that, like that last little bit of control because it's your summit. So, you know, you can always do that if necessary and just have the speakers know that that is possible. And then that's going to encourage them to stick to those terms and conditions that they've agreed to at the beginning as well. Yeah, I think, yeah, um, exactly, Liz. It's like, that's why um, Alice was quite hot on the 
um, making sure that we had the the speakers knew exactly what they had so she would have used the same the same thing if she was reaching out to people that weren't on the platform maybe we paid for a speaker to come in to talk about social media or something like that then and you can pay a lot of money for that and she would still get them to sign all these um, forms to make sure that they're not going to use it as a platform to promote for themselves they're actually doing it for us especially if like a lot of you might be doing paying for people to come and speak for you publicly then it's um you've got to be even hotter on these things as well yes contracts agreements are very important as a business owner legally you have to cover yourself no matter what even if it's your friend speaking uh not even if especially if it's your friend speaking just say that I think I remember an example when we had our speaker sessions briefing with the uh, speakers. Alice had one thing in particular that she would repeat in every session is if you're wearing a T-shirt, remember that you're not wearing any other brand. Uh, it has to be like we did send out the swag to people. So it has to be their own. It has to be Zeller and nothing else. No other branding that would cause problems as a business owner because Zeller was hosting the event. So this was one thing she was particularly clear about in every briefing session. <laughs> yeah, because it's something people don't think about. And I've run events. So that's one of the that's what I do. So I have all of these random experiences. And if someone is in your live event where and presenting and wearing a Coca-Cola t-shirt that could be there's like brand conflict like you can't yeah. because then you're also selling maybe tickets to your event and now you have another brand's logo within the present like you have to be very careful of liabilities of those kind and yeah it's one of those things a lot of people wouldn't think of but I was like hey let's make uh -huh. sure you're not wearing a coca-cola t-shirt tomorrow okay and I I've heard it so many times that I remember it now. Whenever I'm doing something like this, I'm sure this is the first thing that is going to pop in my head. <laughs> Unless you're being paid, of course. Unless you've got product placement. Yeah. Yes, and in that case, in. sponsorships, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Please, Coca-Cola, come sponsor me. <laughs> Just welcome. in case you're watching this. Just in case you're watching this. <laughs> yeah, the sugar-free one, maybe. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was a good point man meat so so yeah that i mean the, you do need a little bit of timing and if it's your first summit then it's okay to give yourself more timings there are some people that run an annual summit a summit could be something you run every year that you actually become known for it can become part of your process of your business it could be part of you raising your brand awareness it can be part of your launch formula, uh, uh, sales formula, your marketing. It could become really big part of your business and your brand. And you could be planning it all year. Um, there are people and companies, especially bigger companies that run multi-day events, that the planning for their next summit starts the day after the one ends, right? Um, and not that there's a lot that's happening right at the end, right at that beginning process, but yeah, it could be a whole year. So for you, your timings of and deadlines, you just want to give yourself enough buffer, like that you're not under too much pressure to get it done. I'm always, I'm always under the, I err on the side of caution and I'd rather you have more time than not enough time. There are a lot of plans out there that I know that I've seen out there, like the 90 day summits, people put together and run a summit in 90 days. And I tend to call those fast food summits. Um, and they're just junky junk food type summits that, um, you know, aren't, are not a great experience, you know? So um, I don't recommend that if you're like a smaller summit, that's like, you know, maybe you just have five or six speakers and it's just a short time and it's this, then yeah, maybe 90 days is enough for you, especially if these, are, it's a tight knit group of people. So you, you have to, part of that planning process is you really figuring out the purpose of your summit, um, why you're running it, who you would kind of like involved in that summit, 
Uh, are you going to do it live? Are you going to do a pre recorded? Are you going to hire somebody to produce it and help you manage it? Um, you know, so there's all of these other little aspects of it. Are you going to um, sell tickets? Are you going to have affiliates promoting it? Are you going to pay speakers? So there's all of these little bits and pieces that you will have to decide and then figure out what those timings look like for you. Like I said, minimum four to six months for those kind of timings. And I don't know if anybody's on, if anybody wants to ask specific questions about when they should do this, that, or the other thing. My personal feeling is that at the 30 day out mark, I want pretty much everything done. I want all the things done about a month before the summit so that I can focus those 30 days just on that promotional aspect and engaging with my speakers on social media, promoting it, getting in registrations and doing that stuff. But I want all the other stuff pretty much done and solidified at that 30 day mark so I can just promote, 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 promote especially for you all with biz, as business owners, you want to have that promo so that if you have maybe that upsell for recorded access, bonus access, and you have those ticket sales, you're to be able to increase those sales, you're going to want to have that at least that 30 day promotional period. To yeah, really for sure. Get yeah. It. Yeah, it's like um, Liz was saying earlier as well, goal. You know, if you've got a goal, what you're heading towards, because, you know, it doesn't have to be paid. If you were running like a David Zendler, like we do six hour session, you could do it, but you would have a goal. Would the goal be to keep your community happy, which is what we kind of do with our David Zendlers, so we don't actually get any money from what we're doing? Or would, which probably wouldn't be for you unless you've got a thriving community and you want to keep them happy, which would be the goal. But if your other goal was because you're bringing new people in and you want to run this, then your goal might be right. Okay. Well, I want to, I want to get them onto my membership package. So then you've got to allow for that. You're going to make sure that your site is all ready to take new people in that are going to register after you've done it. And you need to make sure that you are doing promotions within that um, mini summit as well. If you were running that, so you need to make sure, and that's why it's so important with the planning and strategy side, um, which is, you know, what Alice has done for this. So different things, different things. So shall I move on? Yes. Alice is going to cue me to move on through the slides. Yes. <laughs> and if, you know, if there's any questions around the timings and plannings of the summit, um, things like that, you know, you guys just ask in the chat, ask in the comments, um, and we'll be in to chit chat with all of you um, without a without a problem. You know, we do that. So, oh, the global speaker list, all different times. So, so yeah, this was like this was one of my my little like things that I was like really concerned about <laughs> because I've seen summits fall apart all because of time zones. Okay. Because we live in a global world. Now I'm not going to call out any, um, anybody specifically, but there are people in the world who, who think they and their time zones are the only thing exist in the world. Um, and they're not, they don't always think of the fact that, you know, like I know that I'm on a team where I'm up at four o'clock in the morning to be on this live stream and that happens, right? And I'm, I'm cool with it because I know we have members all around the world. I know our team is all around the world and some people, they will see a time and go, you know, oh, uh, for example, I run an evening uh, onboarding webinar that's at 9 p.m. my time. Well, that's 2 a.m. for David and Liz. <laughs> um, so chances are they aren't going to be on it, but some folks will be like, 
how dare you run a webinar at two o'clock in the morning? And I'm like, well, it's two in the morning for you, but it's not two in the morning for me, right? So some people just can't think outside of their own bubble, right? <laughs> so, and that's why I was very concerned about that because if you don't have, um, if you're not aware of the time zones, if you're not making sure you have that set up, you and your speaker, somebody could miss a, on a live event, somebody could mix their stage call, all of that. So that can happen. So, and Manmeet, I know you wanted to, to share something around the time zone schedule. Uh, yes, I'll just share the screen. Oh, one moment. Can I share the screen, David? Uh, yeah, you should be able to. I just uh, wanted to show while Alice was speaking that how we had set up the Zenler time zone and the time zone that the speaker had. And Alice was very specific about testing that what is the range so that uh, since it's a global time zone, if we are five minutes ahead or five minutes later, the time could go up and down. So the entire schedule, uh, the change was done by Alice and she was very specific that we match the time and we don't miss it. So I, while you were talking, I wanted to share this. Yes, yes. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. So we had in the first column, you can see we had the time in BST because that's really the main headquarters for Zendler for the main team. So we were basing it on the UK time zone. And then from there, um, we have the speakers time zones um, and the timing. So 9 a.m. BST, um, you know, 9.30 a.m. BST was like 7.30 in the evening for our first speaker, who was Jono. So like at the bookends of day, right? It's early in the morning in the UK. <laughs> it was like 4 a.m. for me, right? 4.30 a.m. for me. It was 9.30 a.m. for uh, David and Liz. And it was 7.30 p.m. for Jono. And Manmeet, what time was the first one for you? It was 1.30 p.m. in the afternoon. 1.30 in the afternoon. So like it, we're all experiencing the same event and all at a different time of day, like early in the morning, mid-afternoon, later in the evening, but all at the same moment in time, right? So and making sure everybody knew that, right? And confirming I had to think about when I'm looking at time zones, one of the things I had to think about was, um, are there any time zone changes that happen between now and when the summit goes off, right? Because if somebody's time zone changes, and it did, Jono's changed in during the summit, his time zone changed, daylight saving time went away, came on, whatever, something happened. Um, and like, why do we change time zones? I'm so tired of it. Um, <laughs> cause we have time zone changes coming up and we're five hours off. I'm five hours off from UK time. Pretty soon. I'm only going to be four hours off and then I'm going to go back to five hours. Like it is something, but when you're a digital business, when you are doing business online virtually, you have to be aware that you're not just in your city or town. You're not just in your con your state and your or county or whatever. You're not on your your country or your continent. You know, like you're global. You're worldwide, and so you have to start having that mindset of those worldwide timings, right? And all those time zones and be really prepared for that. Um, that was really important for us to keep track of. Yeah. Yeah. It's um, one of those things. That's what we're trying, you know, we like in lots of challenges and things, you can see that we've got, um, uh, we're using time buddy in there, but know that the calendar will show in your time zone. So if we set it for 4 uh, p.m. BST and you're looking at it in the U.S., then you're going to see it in your time zone or anywhere else in the world. So that is a little thing that we added to the calendar. It's not obvious. So a lot of you might not even realize that, that um, as you go in and set your lives up 
and someone else is looking at it in Australia, you might not realize, but it actually shows in their time. So it converts. So it's almost like this time buddy conversion is built into our calendar. Now, maybe we're going to incorporate more where we can just drop things into pages as well later. I don't know. Maybe it's an idea because they've already got it in the calendar. So time zones are massively important. I mean, I, I know that Alice is up really early today, but uh, Mammy as well, who's ahead of us. So what time, Mammy, did when we finished at nine o'clock, what time was it in your <laughs> in your your part of the world? It was 1.30 a.m. Oh, yes. <laughs> oh, dear. So there you go. It's like one side right to the other. Um, but that's another reason why we wanted team members that were situated at different time zones you know because i know we're based in the uk but we wanted someone in the us we wanted someone in india and so that we can cover all of the time zones right the way around but it is a massive a massive subject isn't it it's something that you that is something that you don't think about is it absolutely and i also feel that because of the time zone thing we also made sure that we do multiple and double checkups like uh, in the speaker sessions, one week before we would tell the speakers, you know, this is your time, is this sure? And then uh, on the day of the summit, 15 minutes before, we would text them whichever medium they chose that, hey, your session is coming up 15 minutes from now. And all of that, just to make sure that we don't slip the time difference. Not that we don't know that they will turn up or not, uh, but we just wanted to be sure that the time doesn't slip just because of the global uh, time zone that we were operating in. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Like Alice was saying, like Jono's, Jono's changed, his time zone changed, did it? Yes. Uh, in the sheet, it was 7.30. He actually spoke 6.30 his time. It was one hour before. Wow. So that's something. If you're, if you're writing, if you're planning a summit, it's right in one of those times where it changes, flicks across, um, then just be careful of that. That's, a, that's quite a big one to, to be careful of. Oh, yeah. It, well, and I, you know, the reason that I thought of it was because it's happened to me, right? We learn from our experiences, right? <laughs> it's happened to me where it's like, wait, but that's not what time it is. This is what time it is. Like, what happened? Oh, yeah, there was a time change in there. That's what happened. Okay. You know, we got to pay attention to that. <laughs> that <laughs> happened, you know, um, you know, some, if some very, one of these days, maybe we'll, we'll have a different kind of conversation because a lot of things has happened to me during events, like summits, a lot of some very funny things, um, some very interesting things, stories <laughs> for another day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah well it's funny you say that because the challenges and like the sunday workshops that we were running and stuff the same thing happens there we we have this time where we're running um running like a sunday workshop at like 4 p.m and people are like oh you're not there and other people are saying oh you you're an hour early or and uh it gets really confusing for about a week because <laughs> everyone's used to, oh i'm getting oh you know i'm gonna have my breakfast or i'm gonna have my dinner and then i can just watch i can do the live sunday and then they get there and i'm not there <laughs> and it's like it's my fault <laughs> it's that time zone has changed <laughs> I think uh, what David is just mentioning, a lot of times when we are running uh, like global audience summits, it also happens like the date changes. You are still in the current date that you've planned, but for the speaker or for the person who's coming in, their date has changed. So either they would contact you one day before that uh, isn't the summit today, or maybe they'll contact you the next day. Oh, isn't the summit today? Has it already happened? Because the date could also change because of the time that we are operating in. Yeah. Yeah. So massively confusing for everybody. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. Right. Because some people are in the future, right? Some people are in the future. <laughs> or the past. Or in the past. Some people are just in the past. Yeah. And I think to reduce this, what we had started with in the beginning, that teamwork is important because for this as well, we kept the moderation in three different zones, like morning, evening, and afternoon. And we divided the speakers because, because it was 13 speakers. So we were making sure that one educator, uh, you know, talks to two to three or maybe four speakers so that we are ensure that no one slips by and there is no time clash happening and luckily across the day there was no time slippage happening the entire day so i think uh, teamwork again uh, played a big role in managing the time zone 
Yep. Like I say, teamwork makes the dream work. <laughs> That's how it goes. Yeah. <laughs> For sure. That's true. You guys were, and we did great. And I'll be honest with you. If you run a live summit for 12 hours, do not count on that happening for you. I'm just saying like some time zones going to get, something's going to happen. Like we had things, right. But we didn't have that thing. Um, so you could have that thing. Like something always goes wrong. It's live. So you just, you, like we said at the beginning, you just kind of have to like go with it um, and deal with it the best that you can, but something will happen. So just prepare yourself. For that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, is like I, I suppose um another thing that would um kind of prop things up is um if you've got automations so if a time zone changes and you're sending out an hour before well it is an hour before in yours and it goes out to them then if you've put the time in there then that might not be right so be careful of that because if you do actually hard code the time in there and then it goes off to them they'll get it an hour and they'll read like four o'clock oh but it's three o'clock you know so that can help that can happen as well so you need to watch those automations when you're planning things out um but it should if you just don't leave those in there you just have the link there an hour before then it'll be all correct it's only if you type if you actually put something in there that it could be wrong so be wareful of that or wary of that Right. right. You can do things like starting soon instead of starting in an hour, because what happens is if sometimes if you have a time zone change, like for myself and the UK, for the US and the UK, um, I think our time, we're about to fall back. And the UK's time zone isn't going to change for a few more weeks after ours changes. So there's a few weeks where we're actually only four hours from each other instead of five hours. So if in an email I put, you know, you know, in five hours, we're going to see each other, but really it's four hours, right? So now I've just messed up their thing. So I say things in my emails like it's starting soon or we're almost ready or, you know, that kind of thing, um, especially if I know I'm right in the middle of a time zone change, uh, like be vagueish in your in your thing. We're starting soon. You can do that. You can do that. <laughs> well, it's they will get it an hour. You know, it will say an hour before the thing starts. But it's if you type, if you put something in there um, saying a particular time, then that could be yeah. wrong because then they'll be like, oh, oh, it's happening at that time. It's not there yet, so they'll go off. Um, so that is definitely something. So that's actually a, another little golden nugget for you there to make mm -hmm. sure that you're doing that with your automations. Um, let the system handle it and it will be fine. But you start typing things in there, hard coding, then you've got a problem uh, or potential problem. So that brings us to the first part, which is ideas and purpose, Alice. So we're going to move on to the second part now. And ready? It is 10.02. So we're well on schedule. Brilliant. Well done, guys. Woohoo. <laughs> we know how to do this. We have experience. <laughs> so we're talking about all the planning. Now, Alice had to be here for the whole day. So that's why she had to get up so early, because obviously, like she's been controlling all of this. So she needed to be on here the whole day, <laughs> like it or not. <laughs> so we are talking about the planning so let's uh move on to the first bit and alice can take it away oh what is the first bit um oh setting up um the resources yeah i mean so one of the things we wanted to do especially since one of our our purposes in the summit was to include our community members that this wasn't going to be professional speakers that you know we were we were bringing in or anything we wanted members of our community to be able to share their experiences with each other um as part of this um community so that was a really important piece to us and as a result um what I wanted to be able to make sure that all the speakers felt really comfortable with doing a speaking event, with being live on a summit, giving a presentation, because a few of them 
did maybe express a little nerves to me that, oh, I'm nervous. I've never done anything, blah, blah, blah. So, uh, so we wanted to make sure that we could um, provide resources for our speakers that needed it because not everybody did, right? Some of our speakers like Angela, who had popped on early this morning in the chat um, was talking about, she is a very experienced speaker, right? Howard, that's what he does for a living, right? So we had speakers that had a lot of experience that are members of the community, which I mean, we're bound to, right? We have a very large community. Um, but we also have speakers that are just everyday people that are running businesses. And so that's not, and that's not part of their business is speaking and doing that kind of um, public engagement. So we wanted to make sure that we had everything resourced together for them. And so what we did was um, I created a course inside of Zendler uh, that was for speakers only. And there's a couple of different ways you could do this kind of thing to create a speaker resource center. This was the way we chose to do it, um, is to have it set up, give them some important information, um, offer them, make sure the schedule and the timings are there for that time zones we were talking about. That was another way to manage it was to talk about it a lot and to post it in a lot of places. Hey, these are the time zones confirming with the speakers. This is what I have of the time zone difference and the timings, blah, blah, blah. Um, and talking about that a lot. So that was important in the resource center. Um, we also have, um, and I'm there. sharing the screen wherein you had put the information. Uh, yes, yes, yes. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. So under important information, go ahead. Um, you have yeah. um, summit. Um, oh, goodness. So, so uh, the speaker sessions, I know I can't, I'm like reading my old lady eyes. I'm sorry. <laughs> So uh, speaker information session. So one of the things we also did with the speaker resources is we had meetings, um, several sessions, because again, that goes right back to that global time zone thing, right? Um, we have speakers in many different time zones. So we offered a variety of speaker sessions to um, have that conversation live interaction with our speakers to make sure we can answer their questions and talk them through some things. Um, so we had those sessions. Um, I did add the talk guidelines and the templates in there as well. Um, the talk guidelines were in the application, but we went ahead and put them in here as well. So people had access to them. Um, the support and contact information, very important important that not just do your attendees have a good experience when you host a summit, but you want your speakers to have a really good experience, right? That's your network. And the idea for the summit is those people are going to promote your summit to their people, right? And so when they promote the summit to out to their world, they want to feel good about it, right? So you want to make sure that you're taking really good care of your speakers, right? You as the host of the summit have two groups of people that you really have to take care of and make sure have a good experience. Well, one is your speakers, one is your attendees, right? So both are very important. Um, so we wanted to make sure they had all of the information they needed for that. Um, so then part of the promotional process um, that we did, even though we didn't do a lot of that, that, um, that, interviews for promotion with the speakers, we would do some for them. And I know that's on the agenda to talk about later. So I'm not going to talk about too much here, but we'll, um, but that was part of the process, us interviewing with them, them interviewing with us, doing it both ways. Um, the social media stuff. So in the resource center, like here's your promotional materials, here's some email templates, um, you know, here's some background images, um, you know, so we did a little bit of um, everything for the speakers and all kept it all in one place, right? Um, we even did a few trainings, right? Each of the team did some bits, right? Um, Liz did the camera confidence training. Um, Manmeet did the tech bits and the editing. Um, 
I did the day of summit tips. Uh, so we all kind of added in some different pieces um, to the presentations. Oh, look, I'm even wearing the same shirt. Um, so, <laughs> so we had, so we wanted to make sure that everybody had trainings if they needed it. Not all the speakers did, but some of them did, and they appreciated the little extra information and tips and trainings, which is why I like to have a speaker resource center so that there's everything because you may have, uh, because somebody's always going to ask you, no matter how many times I say, Hey, this is where it's at. We have the speaker information center. You give people all the information. Someone is bound to message you and say, Hey, do you have X, Y, Z? Sure I do. And then here's the link to the resource center where you can grab it, right? That makes it easier for you rather than you always hunting down the little bits and pieces to then send to somebody. It's just all you have is one link to give them. Yep. Here's the link. Go get it. You know, no matter what it is, that's all we ever had to do. Here's the link. Go get it. Here's the link. There's a training video in there. Here's the link. It's um, in this area. Here's the link. It's here. And that way you're not running around like a crazy person because you could. Like people will be asking you a lot of questions, especially like the day before the summit, just so you know. <laughs> the day before is when most of the questions come up. <laughs> And then, and then you get, oh, I've got all this stuff to look at. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It happens. It happens. Well, you know, that's the thing. We're all busy human beings. We have lives. We have businesses. We have other things we're participating in. When you're a speaker at an event, it's not the same focus as when you're the host of the event, right? So the host is always like all over everything. The speaker is like, oh, yeah, I have that event. <laughs> you <Yeah>. know <laughs> it's not the same for them it's not the same for them and you can't expect it to be either um but you can set some ground rules and some boundaries and and do your best to provide your speakers with as much resources tools information as they need um so that they have a really good experience and that was what was important for me i don't know what you guys think about that yeah, I think it's, um, yeah, I mean, the resource center is a really good idea um, to put that in there because like Alice said, you, you can just, you can put everything in one place. So you just send them that link. So a lot of people, especially, and this is what is really good about it is if you've got a speaker on there and they're not, they haven't done many of these before and um, most people want to get better at what they're doing. If you've got a resource center, they can get in there and they can learn as well. So if you're helping people that are less on camera, then they can actually pick up all these tips and things going through. So for them, it can be a really good experience because one, they're actually getting to be to do a live, which is always good to do things live because you'll get more confident. The more lives you do, you get more confident. But also it means that they're learning and picking up tips and they're seeing how these things run. Now, this is the first time you guys that have attended the summit have seen this behind the scenes. Um, we will be doing a deep dive later. So we'll be actually opening that up. So if you're like, oh, I didn't see that bit, didn't see that bit, don't worry about it. We're going to go back to it. I'm going to jump in there and look at the resources in a little bit more detail. Uh, just show you how it's put together because there are certain things in there that we've done that you might not be aware of, such as locking out anyone from actually just enrolling in it uh, because it is there, but it's manually Alice actually had to put those speakers in there so they've got access to it. It wasn't open to everybody. Otherwise, you just have loads of people just going in there looking through what you've done. And it's a private area, really. We left it all open on the page when he went in there because we knew later on we were going to be discussing about how you do all this stuff. So there'll be a lot of tips and tricks on the deep dive side. But a resource center is just so handy, isn't it? It's like you don't have to, oh, I've got to send my Zoom background to that one. I've got to send it to that one. You know, you've got to email it there. They just go in there. It's all in there. Just have a look through, you know. You could also force people to actually go through that resource center if you wanted to. So you could set a, a compulsory assignment at the beginning, and then you could put one at the end. So they wouldn't be able to move through until they'd actually gone through there. So you could actually force them to go through it if you wanted to. It depends on how harsh you want to be with it. We left ours open because a lot of our speakers were quite experienced. So they probably glossed through lots of stuff, grabbed the content they needed and then shoot out. But there were some that weren't. So they probably went through all of it as well. So yeah, good. I, absolutely. 
I also feel that, you know, when you're talking about people can learn from it, I feel resources really come in handy. If we have, you know, professional speakers coming in, like when people do events, sometimes when they have the budget, they actually pay speakers to come in. But when people are coming up who are just new, spoken at one or two events, or probably it's their first time, uh, we can also put up the resources considering them that we tell them every small detail. Like in our summit as well, we had professional speakers, but we made sure that we tell them the basic thing, like, you know, you have to put up the virtual background, you have to light, uh, you have to have the light this way, considering everyone at once. So in that way also, it comes really handy. And with the speaker sessions that we wanted, like Alice said, since we had a global time zone we didn't really have to go to each one of them and say okay this is the time suits to you is this the time that suits to you and we couldn't have all of them at once uh, considering the time so Alec had set up a session wherein there were three four slots and inside the resource section people could pick up one slot and book and then we had three to four speakers in one session so that also became you know smooth and automatic on its own rather than we going to each speaker and then confirming back and forth so I think that with the resource section really helped us to get moving. Yeah, perfect. Yeah, absolutely. All right, so yes. speaker sessions. So yeah, so the speaker sessions, as Mamit was just talking about, uh, are the sessions that we set up to meet face-to-face, -face, right? So we've gone through the process of, okay, they filled out the application, they've agreed to the terms and conditions, um, they um, we're, you know, approving them, we're, we're getting, we're talking to them about their talk. And one of the things that you have to do with anybody really is like the speaker sessions kind of went over some of the stuff that was actually already in the speaker agreement when they applied, except like most people don't read stuff. Just be prepared for that. As a host of a summit, you're going to say, well, I prepared the terms and conditions. I compared the contract. It said this, but they did this. If you just give them a contract and expect that they signed it and said, yep, and they did the thing, then expect that 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 is not the case, okay? They're gonna be like, I, I didn't know that. Well, it's in the thing, but they didn't really read it because nobody does. Like how many terms and conditions and agreements do you really read every detail before you sign? Now, for some of us, we're nerdy like that. So we kind of do. So I happen to be that way. So I do read all the things, but most people don't. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that man meets like she doesn't, right? So... <laughs> <laughs> Mammy's like, no, nope, I don't yeah, do that. I, 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 I would like, sign. I would skim it. I would skim it like in a one go. <laughs> so, by the way, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> because generally I know that there's one basic rule that you uh, do not have to be too much self-promotion. You don't have to go off the record. You have to provide value. So those were the basic things that I generally know and I take care of. So I generally skim through like once and I don't really go line by line and that way. So I think I would have to agree on that. Oh no, I think Alice is as is referring to any kind of contract. <laughs> yeah, any kind. Like it, some people just don't, some people, yeah, they just, they don't read it and they just go. So, but yeah, like Mammy says, so one of the things that you have to do is you have to find a variety of ways to give the same message. It's just like with your marketing, right? Part of the information you're providing to your speakers even though it's a, a summit that they signed up for, you're kind of marketing to them about their responsibility in your event, right? So part of that was, okay, here's the agreement, but then here's the speaker resource center and it, the, the, it's posted there. Um, here's the speaker session where we're going to cover a couple of these pieces. And then kind of being able to, as the team that's meeting with the speakers, being able to say, oh yeah, like let's follow up with this person about this thing let's follow up with this person about that thing because there's certain things when you're interacting with your speakers you can see where maybe they don't feel too confident or maybe they have questions or maybe you can see that they didn't quite understand something and so you want to be able to follow up with them um and because that just makes the experience better for everyone when you can make sure that your speakers 
um, feel like they are included in the process. They feel like you're showing up there for them to support them. Um, that, you know, that's what I talk about, like on all of the, um, the onboarding webinars that I do for new pro and premium members. Uh, I'm always saying things like, you know what, at Zendler, we have your back right? It's not just this one thing you sign up and we just say, go to it. Um, we show up for you all the time. We're here for you. We have your back. We've got these trainings. We're doing these things. And the same things that you want to be able to say to your speakers and make them feel like I've got your back, right? I'm not just, you know, saying whatever. I'm showing up here. I'm here to support you and um, make sure that you have a successful day as well. So, um, so having the speaker sessions is just another part of that. And also like Mamit said, being aware of those global time zones, you know, and how you set them up. Yeah. I think I'd also like to add to the speaker sessions also gave us an option to confirm the date and time of the summit. Again, yeah. coming back to the time zone, a mm -hmm. few people are probably, you know, they were confused whether it's this date, it's that date, again, coming back to the time zone. So that helped us confirm that this is the time, this is the date, and a lot smaller things like the Coca-Cola thing was mentioned in every speaker session, then about the virtual backgrounds. And this also gave an option for the speakers to ask their questions the small doubts that they had we were there for them on the one-on-one -on -one and they could ask the questions so it gave them space as well to speak to us if they had any doubts or concerns mm -hmm. yeah so you I, I think as well you set up a little group as well didn't you Mammy, to make sure that you were in connection with them so they could just quickly uh, be able to get information from you Yes, uh, we did set up a WhatsApp group taking, uh, you know, permission from the speakers because WhatsApp could be a little personal. So asking them if they are comfortable, it, 80 to 90 percent of the speakers are in that WhatsApp group. And we did that just because if we needed anything immediately or their session is coming up. So we could just quickly, you know, tell them that this is the time this is coming up. And uh, and we did this in the speaker session. So when they were with us, we asked them that, you know, what is your medium of communication? Because uh, considering the sensitivity of the time zone that we are operating in, we would might have to get to you immediately and we need a, a medium to it. And uh, speakers who uh, had comfortably with, uh, were comfortable with WhatsApp, we put them in the WhatsApp group with a few educators in the group. And the others who said that Facebook Messenger is better for them, we made sure that we connect, add each other on Facebook as friends, and then message them that, you know, this is the channel I'll be messaging you through. So yes, mm -hmm. we did that as well. Yeah, you yes. have to make a decision as a, a, when you have a large group of people that you're going to communicate with, you need to make a decision on how you're going to approach communication. Will you um, ask everyone what their best communication is and do a variety of communications? Or will you just say, this is how I'm communicating, get with the program. Like, so you have to decide based on your business, um, based on how many speakers you have, based on your time and energy and managing things, um, based on maybe your priority of how you're taking care of your speakers. Um, for me, I always err on the side of customer service. Um, so I try to make sure that I can communicate with people in the way they want to be communicated with. Because for me personally, I have very specific sort of communication tools that I use. And when people use other ones outside of what I am used to, I, I, it's hard for me to incorporate a new tool into my day-to-day -day life for this short period of time. I forget to check it. Um, I've been part of a lot of events where they want this specific thing used and it's not something I'm used to. And so I forget it. And then I miss things that maybe I didn't want to miss. Um, so, and that's as a speaker, as someone who's running the event, like I just have to have all the communication things, but when you're not like, that's not part of your day-to-day -day life. That's not part of your thing. And it's hard to incorporate. So it's something you want to think about um, and asking people what is their preferred communication and kind of being prepared um, to communicate in a variety of mediums, which you can still automate, um, but just being prepared to have a variety of them so that you can connect with everybody in the way that's best for them. 
Yeah, for sure. I, I also like well, for David Zender, for instance, because I mainly get people from our community to be on David Zender. Uh, they're all on Facebook, so they're all on Messenger. Right. So it's very easy. I just message them and then I drop the live link straight in and they pop on. So that's how we do it with a David Zendler, just in case anyone's interested in that. Now, I have had people in the past say, well, I don't look at my messenger that much. So can you send me an email? And uh, and I do that, but I prefer them to come on there. If, they, if they've said that they'll be on, then I prefer you like jump on messenger. That's where the link will be. Because it's funny now, isn't it, that uh, like posting an envelope to someone uh, used to be called snail mail. And it's really funny now because email has almost become snail mail, the new one. <laughs> we want like that. We want instant access to people, push notifications, things popping up on your phone all over the place, <laughs> driving us nutty. Um, <laughs> but it's weird, isn't it? That email has actually become a slow form of communication now. Yeah. I mean, who would have believed that sort of like 10 years ago, five years ago? You wouldn't, would you? No, not at all. That email was the coolest thing ever, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. so interesting. It is. And I like I personally turn off notifications for everything. I just turn them off. I'm tired of notifications uh, interrupting my life. So I turn most of them off um that's why the most important uh communication tool for me is text like text me and if you don't know my number then tough you're not texting me and i'm not getting your communication <laughs> you have to know me well enough to get my phone number <laughs> <laughs> right so that speaker session so this is the last slide of this planning section Okay, so when it comes to using um, the live interactive webinars, um, you again depends on what kind of summit you want, what you're going to set up. For us, um, we use the interactive webinars um, because we wanted to interact with our people. We wanted our speakers and our audience all in the same session. Um, you know, we wanted to have that, um, that interaction with everybody, right? Um, as part of it, because that was, that was a key in that managing live aspects of digital business was having um, the interactive webinar. So you do have different types of lives that you can manage inside of Zendler for your, um, for your event. If you want in your event to use um, classes, that's possible. If you want to use the webinar style where you're in the um, front and your audience is in the back chat. Um, those are things you have to think of. You have to think of how exactly um, you're going to be using these recordings, how you're going to interact with your people. Um, also, you have to think about the liabilities. If you're recording the sessions, um, and you're going to use those recorded sessions for things, people's names and photos um, and images could pop up in that recording. And if you are putting this out on social media, if you're going to put them in different places, you want to make sure the terms and conditions on your site are set up so that people know that that can happen. Basically, your attendees, um, when they sign up and get a ticket, that, you know, those things people don't read that we were just talking about that they just sign and go, whatever. Um, we have to put those, those um, terms and conditions in there to say, hey, you know, your image may, you know, by being here, you agree, blah, 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 blah. Um, you agree that X, Y, Z is true so that when people come on, um, you're covered because you gave the terms and conditions for that, right? For that participation. So, and we did, oh yeah, Mammy, we did the speaker sessions in interactive webinar style as well. Um, 
Oh, did we do? Oh yeah. Interactive webinar. So we actually set up the, um, the, uh, the session the speakers as have live, people can... right. Cause they had to book in, we set yeah. up the, um, the summit sessions were classes. That's right. Because we streamed them into the lessons, Yeah, but it was yeah. the same, um, the same interface once inside. Yes, 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 yes. yes. And uh, I think, uh, just correct me if I'm wrong, that we particularly chose live interactive webinars for the speakers was that if at all the speaker is not accessing the speaker resources or something, uh, live interactive webinars don't really need an account creation when they're booking in a slot. Uh, it could happen without creating an account inside the site, right? Right. So that was also one reason why we went with interactive webinars. Like if the speakers have not really created an account or something, at least with the link, they can book in a session and speak to us. Yeah, they could still, maybe they needed help with that. Um, maybe there was something else going on, but we still wanted them to be able to um, reach out to us in and, and reach out to us and be able to have that communication if they didn't create um a login on the site yet <laughs> i'll just share my screen though the sessions have already ended but this is how the page looked and the timings were right here for all the people to select as per their time and yes. alice had also put in the emails and every speaker was uh, reminded uh, that it is you know now the session is about to come because again coming back to the time zone people were joining one session from different time zones like I remember one session it was uh, 2 a.m in the BST it was about 9 p.m for Alice and it was about 6 a.m for me in the morning and they had joined that session and the speaker had a different time zone so uh, making sure of that, the emails, like Alice said, uh, starting soon, just a minute to go, now live. And everybody knew that the session is going to happen and all the speakers turned up to all the sessions. So the emails even helped uh, for reminders. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, you know, again, it's the communication, um, the constant communication to make sure that um, that everyone um that everyone is taken care of that everyone has all the information that they need all of those things for sure for Absolutely. sure i think we were very closely connected to our speakers uh, across the summit like every point in time if they needed us if we needed them or there was a communication to happen so the channel was very strong by different means, but uh, across the summit since the start, since the applications went in, I think we were very closely connected and that is why everything happened very smoothly. Yes, yes, yes. And uh, yes, we also forgot to mention that during the speaker sessions, we also made sure that we asked the speakers to send in their slides and we made sure that we go through the slides as well because if there is any logo any brand that could be conflicting with Zendler as a host that could also become a problem on the day of the summit so that was again one thing that we took care of from the legal point of view that there should not be cross promoting and basically the competition names coming in so we did a double check on the slides as well yeah absolutely you're muted david Sorry. Oh, first okay. technical hitch by me. <laughs> <laughs> Happens to me all the time. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, um, we've also got coming up. We're going to actually talk about what happened within the actual summit day itself and how that was handled by uh, Liz and Mammy. Um, and we, we'll talk about that later as well. So I think it's the, the live interactive webinars to set up speaker sessions um, was really important as well, plus the emails that follow it up. So nice. Yeah, it was, you know, we wanted to give the speakers those options. Like I said, that's when you are running a summit, you as the host have more than one audience that you're connecting with. You have your speakers, um, that relationship, that support, lifting them up. That has got to be a priority for you. 
as does making sure that the attendees also feel taken care of and have a good experience. So you have two to do, um, two things to focus on there and those people's experience. And any of the things that you can do to um, create that connection with your speakers, to build that relationship, um, because that's also part of you being seen as an authority within your industry, right? Because you have these other people that you are leading, um, that you are trying to like, yes, you're the host of the summit and you're sort of lifting them up, but you're also the leader of that summit. And so they're looking to you as that leader, as that authority and other people outside of the speaker list also see you as that, right? You're leading this group of people for this event on this topic. So you're at the top of that hierarchy, right? And so you're seen as more of that authority. And so you can really build your reputation that way by making sure that you are communicating with your um with your speakers in a way that helps really build that relationship and puts you in that position of authority and respect um, with your speakers as well as with your audience. Because even the speakers' um, respect and appreciation for you can come through to your audience as well, right? That could, that happens as well. So there's a lot of, of really important reasons to provide the speaker resource center to do the things. Now you all have Zendler, so you have an amazing tool to be able to create that secret course that only your speakers have access to, to provide them with that information and communication. You have that. Um, you know, if you're not using Zendler, then you have to come up with that system for yourself. You have to figure out what that is so that you can just provide that. And it makes it easier. And then David mentioned it too, right? You don't want to be sending this off to this person, then this off to this person. Everything's in one place. You just give them the, everybody goes there. Just go there to get it. It's all there together, right? Um, at Zendler, we're kind of all about like, to Zen, no nonsense, easy, sort of simple, less convoluted way of doing things, right? That's what we're about, aren't we, David? Yeah, I mean, it's the old saying, isn't it? Uh, keep it simple, um, mm -hmm. you know, Socrates. <laughs> yeah, well. keep it simple, sweetie. <laughs> <laughs> That's it, yeah. <laughs> So uh, yeah, Socrates come into it. Um, yeah, so that that sort of thing, that communication is key. Uh, big shout out to Kyla as well. Kyla's on there. Um, she's a great help on the community. So yeah, good, good that you're enjoying it, um, Kyla. She's um, saying and well, it's in Facebook. Then you can just use Messenger in there, which is what I said for David Zendler because that's where our community hangs out. Keeping it really simple. We always say that it's like anything you're doing. Kevin mentions it in many of the boot camps that he runs. Like, don't just so many people just overcomplicate it because I've got this, I've got this, I've got to connect with this, I've got I've bought this, this, um, this plugin or this app, and I want to connect it up with that. And do you really need it? And they overcomplicate it. And then what happens is then they don't get the job done. So keeping it as clean as possible, like Alice just said, Zenla gives you all the tools you need. Um some people might, well, more experienced people can use different software because they're more experienced. But if you're just starting off or you're new to this or even intermediate, you want to be starting as simple as possible. We've given you all the automations that you can use. And when we do the deep dive, which is happening um, in a minute, then um, you'll see how simple it is and it's all done inside the platform, which is what our key thing is to make sure it's all in there. There's, an, there's another reason why we do it all inside the Zenla platform. It's not just to showcase Zenla. It's also to spot any potential uh, features that could do with being added to the platform. And this is a big one because like, we are course creators. All of us are course creators on the team. And we will often see things that um, maybe the developers won't from that point of view. So we can put that across, like this really needs to go in there. This is something that has to be of the top most importance. And then they will put those things in there. So we spot things as we're going through, don't we, Alice? Yeah, we do. It happens all the time. We're like, hmm, 
this, it would be better if I wish we could do this, <laughs> you know, it'd be better if we could do it this way, you know, so we end up creating our own little wish list of things that we want to um, do. And then there's also the, okay, so how do we make this work? Like this idea, this thing, okay, how do we make that work inside of Zendler and just inside of Zendler? Like, how do we do that? again, in that really simple way. Like, how do we make it not convoluted and crazy, right? And how do we make it work in there? So yeah, we have to do that and we have to test it out. And um, yeah, it's always a process, David. Yeah, and, and there is, you know, there's always a workaround. There's always mm -hmm. a way of making it work as we'll kind of show later with a certain part of, that we never got to see you know you guys never got to see but there is a workaround for doing pretty much anything you want but we don't want you to if possible we don't want workarounds we want you to just be able to use a system and it and it work and it does work to what we've we say it works to but as we push the frontiers on these things then we kind of have that this would be good this we really need to do this if we're aiming at people being able to run full day summits we need to be able to do these sort of things so all these things come up so it's really helpful for us because okay we we started off doing this because we wanted to run a challenge uh, a summit and we wanted to run a challenge on that summit and go through it all and as we were doing going through all of that stuff then other things come up for us that sometimes we don't tell you about we just feed it back to to the team to Rakesh and um he says whether that's going to go in there or not, or he keeps it on the back burner for when it will. So that's what we do for you. We're always hounding them. I don't know why Rakesh <laughs> puts up with us sometimes. Like, <laughs> you know, we are always True. hounded. Oh, but it's for you because it's going to help us with our businesses. It's also going to help you guys as well. And we need a need for it. And, you know, so I see posts sometimes and there might not be something that someone wants. And, if I look at it and think, oh, you know, that's something that's really, really, really important and needs to be sorted out, then I will feed back. And, um, you know, most of the time Rakesh implements things. Sometimes we can't because other things are going in, especially at this time, because we've got big infrastructure things going into the platform. You know, our main key thing at the moment is getting the page builder and obviously communities put in there. Uh, but until page builders done the backbone for that, then we can't put other things in because it needs to ride on the top of communities and we can't put it on the, the system as we had it at the moment because it would be a waste of time. So these kind of roll on, roll on and build on top. And then, of course, all the live section. That's why we've concentrated so much on lives this year is because it's co totally independent. So we can build this up into the magnificent beast that it is today yeah <laughs> <laughs> it is it's growing so much like um and again one of the reasons that that aspect is growing and zendler is really leading the way in this particular area unlike any other other company out there like zendler is leading the way in that live management, right? No other company out there is integrating Zoom or integrating, giving these features included in the price of the platform where you have that live webinar feature, you have that live class feature, you have the live streaming, you have the one-to-one -one booking and you're, and it's not something that's in addition to, it's not something you have to integrate. It's not something Zendler is really leading the way in that because we've already seen the future, right? We already see where things are going with online business right now and having that live connection, having that community, having that engagement, how important that is in business today. Um, I mean, it's one of the main ways we support you is by showing up live, like on a day with Zendler. This is a live aspect of digital business. It's us doing this case study with you right now. When we run challenge, that's a live aspect of doing digital business online today. You know, when we um, when we get those courses going, when we do onboarding webinars, when we do the demo webinars, when um, David does the pop-ups, when Liz does Motivation Mondays, when we do leveling up, when we do office hours, 
all of those are that live aspect of digital business. That's how we are connecting with you, providing customer service to you. That's how we're doing all of those things through that live connection. And we do it through Zendler. We do it through, through our platform um, to show you um, how you can do it and how important it is. And so um, that's why Oh, I think Alice is frozen. <laughs> Alice is frozen. So yeah, she'll be back, I'm sure. <laughs> That's not look at that screenshot. Yeah, has, we have. You froze for a bit there, Alice. You like Oh, I did yeah. I? I was oh, like yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, your internet's going. Oh, right. Yes, bit. my maybe my internet had a moment. Yeah, you might need to kick the computer or the router. Um, yeah, like, like Alice, Alice is frozen again. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Once in a while. <laughs> I know. Yeah. I did so, that. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah, with the live aspect, I mean, obviously, you know, you think the quality of lives we're getting now, this is lives have been around for a while, but they haven't been around for that long, really. And it's only... You know, I think we've been working on the live aspects for over a year now on Zenla. And now, like it's all like I see it as the others are all catching up because like lots of the platforms are now saying, oh, you know, it's the lives are the way to go. It's the, you know, to engage with your market, to, um, you know, communicate with people. It's the number one converter. We we've been doing this for ages. You know, we've been doing this before and we started to build this stuff in because we realized that. And and a lot of it has come from you guys, you know, you, so we're actually getting live data straight from you with that's what we need to do that, you know, that's what I do as my business. So I need to be able to carry on doing that. I need to have that live aspect really up to uh, top notch. <clears throat> so we see it, the actual our market um, data really comes from you guys feeding back to us. So it's and that's what's great. That's what's good about having eight and a half thousand people on our Facebook group, you know. That's that's data. That's priceless. So um, Alice is freezing out again a bit. <laughs> she's uh, she's got to kick the box, I think. <laughs> so, yeah, so that is the the live aspect. So we're ready to move on to the kind of deep dive part. So um, which I'm going to take you through to end this session. So. I'm going to go into the resource center. I'm going to show you how it's put together. I'm going to show you how the summit has been put together as well, how that's been in there. We're going to jump in a little bit into the email automations and that will round up the morning. So uh, I know Mammy is not going to be here the whole day because she's traveling this afternoon. So I want to say a big thank you, Mammy, for being here for the morning session and also She's put all the slide decks together for the um, what you were seeing earlier. So when we've got all that planning all coming up, she wrote all that stuff out so I could just put them straight into a Canva template. So thanks for that. It saved a lot of time. And this is what is great about it. And Alice was overviewing it as well because she's running it. So she needs to make sure it's all correct. So it was really good. Like Alice and Mammy were working very closely on this summit. So, uh, you know, big round of applause to Mammy for for doing all the stuff she did she was popping up my everywhere. right hand woman <laughs> yeah yes. thank you. absolutely thank you. absolutely mm -hmm. yeah and as as you know alice always says that teamwork is dream work so <laughs> <laughs> i'm believing and implementing on that <laughs> that's brilliant excellent all right so I don't know, Alice, are you going to stick around with us or are you going to have a little nap or something? Yes. No, I'm going to stick around. I am going to drop in the background for a minute to grab some more coffee for sure. Um, but yes, I really I can't wait for them to see the deep dive into the system because um, it is simple, but it's also really powerful. Um, and the person to show you this sort of back end um, setup process is definitely David. Uh, because he's the backbone of all of that here at Zendler for our team um, and get and setting up those things behind the scenes like that um, and and making the system um, work in magical, beautiful ways. So take yeah, it away, David. <laughs> I, don't, I don't have to do a lot, really. I just sort of brand it all up. 
but um yeah i just set it up so that alice can go in and set up all the automations and all those sort of things so it's all working with uh, mammy as well um so yeah i'm going to do the deep dive you um okay. you have a nice cup of coffee maybe have a little put your feet up and uh <laughs> but alice will be back fully at three o'clock so um see you later bye <laughs> Right, guys. So we are all talking about implementation now. So you, you've you seen how it was all planned out, how we got the speakers. You've seen some of the sheets. So what you haven't seen is you had a brief look at the resource center, but we haven't looked at the summit and those sort of things. So we're going to go in there. Um, I have got a face. I have got the Facebook group page out. So do, you know, just um, post your questions to me. If you've got any questions while I'm going through this stuff. Uh, now is the time to do it um, when I start going. So we're going to look at the deep dive into the summit. So I hope you guys are ready for this because um, it's going to be quite good for you to see what's going on. Just need to bring the summit page up so that I can uh, I can do that. So we've got two main areas for the summit. We've got the actual resource center and we have the actual summit itself so i'm going to go to the front page we're going to look at i'm going to do a lot of stopping and starting the screen share because we have got email addresses in there and things so obviously i can't show those so i'm going to be jumping back and forth and i will look at um i will look at the chat as we're going through it so as we're going through each part we'll just look at that side of things so let's just jump straight into this part here and here we go so first of all we wanted to do it all on zenla we've we've talked about this so we set up a particular domain here we didn't we could have added it as a custom domain if we wanted to but we left it as the new zenla.com domain subdomain which is zenla live summit Dot .newzenla.com. Now on this first homepage you're going to see that we have the speaker resource center. So the speaker resource center was purely for speakers on the summit. Now we didn't have to leave this in there. We could have just made the course secret. Um, we could have hidden the pricing so that no one could enroll for it because our intention was to use this resource center and only enroll which we could do manually. Uh, people that are speaking on the summit and obviously the team Zenla team itself it would be included in monitoring and looking at that so we set that up on here so normally we wouldn't have this this could be private and you could keep this completely secret and then they could go in so let's um just click the summit access because the summit access is where people are participating so we wouldn't be sending this page out on our, any of our promotions or social posts we would actually be sending this page out because this is the first this is the actual sales page of this particular course so as you can see here, we've got lots of information. Normally you would be charging and then we have the speakers. So we have all the speakers in here and it tells you about them. Uh, you can visit their website. So we do that because these speakers are on here for free. So we put links to their website to give them that promotion that way. So if you're interested in a speaker, um in what they're talking about or you might be interested in one of their courses or you might want to reach out to them you can go onto the page and you go and click straight through to their site so again all designed quite simply inside of zenla so we have all our speakers in here and they're all listed through so some familiar faces in here as well you notice a lot of them have come from the day with zenla got laura lie there honey um, we got John, Angela, um, Carmen, Laura. Uh, by the way, Laura, um, this was quite interesting with Laura. She actually lives out, and I only know this because Kevin told me, she actually lives out in the desert. Um, she's away from kind of uh, good internet access. So her internet was a little bit grainy. There's nothing really we can do about that. So we put that in there. Um, but that was Laura. So sometimes, you know, it's not going to be the, the the quality of it sometimes isn't, but the sound was and like we've talked about before sound if the sound's bad then it's useless so if the sound's good and the video quality is bad then you can live with that 
because you're listening to what they're saying. Now, obviously, it's a little bit different if they're screen sharing and those sort of things showing you information. But um, generally, that's that's how it is. So the sound quality was good. So it's OK to come in there. Uh, we got Howard. We've got Sedant. Um, Jono. So there's a few faces I've not seen before, and uh, some of them were really good. And I want to reach out to certain people to go into um, David Zendler. So Tracy, everybody knows Tracy. We love her. She's always does amazing. Um, Shelly, again, she's been on loads of boot camps. She's a well known figure. Uh, Jim, you guys know Jim if you've been on any of the boot camps and stuff. So um, yeah, all good characters in there. Um, coming in there, all professional in what they're doing in their own right. So this was the page. So you to register, you would click through and go straight through here. Now you notice the top banner always kind of remains the same. And this is a saved out block that we just drop into the pages. So it makes it very, very good to do it from that experience. These blocks should have been removed, by the way. And you can just click and enroll for free. So let's go back again and let's go and have a look at what happens with the speaker resource center now i am logged in as admin so i'll get in here so you can see you can go straight in but if i was logged out uh, and i tried to get in it won't let me because it's not going to allow me to so i'm just switching switching to incognito mode and i can't but if i enroll in the course i'm not going to be able to go in because I can't go into that side because it won't let me. So that is the speaker resources in there. So uh, let's go now and just have a look how this has been put together in the platform. So I'm still going to stop my share whilst I jump into the admin of the site and just take you through each of the things. So let me just jump to these pages and let's go in here. Okay, ah, oh, speaker resource is good. Good, 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 good. Just have to be very careful. So, right. So here we are on Zenla. I'm going to turn my camera off so you guys can see the full screen here. And you can see we have these two. So, just a simple course inside the platform. We've got speaker information and resources. We didn't really, this one is all nicely branded up in here. It looks nice, but it's not, uh, we don't really worry too much about the styling of the speaker information resources. As long as the information is in there, that's what we care about. We're not actually selling this. We're just using it as that side of things. So I'm going to jump into the speaker resources. First of all, you can also see that the course is made secret there as well. So you can't get to it if you try to go to find it on the page so if we click into here we're going to go into the pages first of all so we got our course details in here and that's our url that we'd use so the course is secret um probably make that course price hidden that way you can't get any extra people coming in uh you you'd have to then manually enroll them which is what i'm saying that we could do so uh, which is what it was set on manually enrolled in there all good uh, course card but it's exactly the same as the, as you would put a course together so i'm going to jump to the pricing here you can see in the pricing it's free access uh, we don't even need a pricing really because we can manually enroll them straight in a course um, straight into this hidden course you know so you you could get rid of the free pricing and just manually enroll those people if you wanted to, if you got their email address and send an automation out to them. They'll log in here, log in, they see access, uh, simple as that. We didn't set up any drip. Uh, automations, I don't think there was automations. Now, Alice set this up, so I'm not sure. Oh, they got a welcome email. I think that's all they got, yeah, because they were just straight in the course. So there's no extensive automation to be done uh, on the site. No drip. We didn't want to drip the content out, but um, you could if you wanted to, if you wanted a drip per session for particular speakers to go in there. And in fact, like let's think about this. Let's think about this um, kind of logically. Um, if you wanted to, right, you could have different speakers and you could have them in 
a different section for each of those speakers. So maybe there was a section in there for uh, people that were talking about being good on camera. You could set a section of the curriculum up with just that, and then you could set another one up for um, SEO or marketing. And you could actually just set up a pricing plan or a tiered pricing plan to allow access to one of the sections or both the sections, really up to you. So then if you manually enrolled them in there, you could select the, pri the right pricing tier and then they would only see that content. So you could actually restrict access. This is the same way that you would set up tiered pricing for uh, students coming into a course. So just to give you ideas of how this stuff could work for you, if you've got a particular purpose and you want to set up a, a course that is for your speaker resources or instructor resources, or maybe, right, think about it, maybe you want to set up a part for affiliates. So you've, you've got affiliates working for you and you want to set up a particular section for affiliate information. Like this is where you can go here. This is my course here. Add your affiliate link here. You know, you could do that as one section. Then you might have someone like your VAs. So maybe you want to do training for your VAs on how, how uh, they should be working with your courses or your membership site. So again, you could set up another section. You could set up a tiered one for affiliates, a tiered one for VAs. And then you could just enroll those manually or you could set, tell them to go in and sign up on that particular one because that's what they're, they're, um, they're going to do for you. So there is a way of using this quite interesting. There's a way of using Zenla even for splitting up and making resources for other parts of your business, not just for summits. And that's where I think the magic of Zenla is being able to think as long as you know what the platform does, you can think of varying ways to to make it work for you. A uh, case an example would be Neil. Um, he set up a B2B pricing uh, plan to sell uh, bulk uh, courses to people that were going to be doing a workshop on next week. And he set that up and he's worked with a system to be able to sell multiple seats, if you want, to organizations to B2B. So those kind of things and that way of working with the system is what makes, to me, what makes Zenla truly magic. Um, it's a very flexible um, system. So inside the pages itself, let's just um, preview these pages. So we're going to go through to the sales page. There's nothing really in there because we're enrolling people. Um, nothing on that page really interesting to look at. Check out, obviously, thank you page. And then the course access page there. By the way, this was just built off of the um, uh, summit. So welcome speakers. Now they go through and they get this information inside here. So you've got important information. This is stuff, you know, we want people to watch this. So this again in here, there's PDFs, there's downloads, then there's summit promotional material. And then we've got speaker training and updates. So any updates or stuff is going to go into that area. So let's jump into the curriculum and actually have a look at it and see what's been done in here. So for speaker information, all that's been added in here is a PDF. David. Hello. Yeah, you're not sharing your screen. Oh, dearie me. Sorry, guys. Whoa. OK, so, uh, yeah, that's what I was saying. I'm going to go back a step. A second error is the speaker resources area here. We have our pages and it's just set up as um, there's nothing really on the sales page or checkout page because all about the curriculum and what's in there. So in essence, that's what I've covered. So the course access page, which is the page that shows all the information to the speakers. They can go through here and see important information, summit promotional material, speaker training and updates and all the stuff that's in there. So let's just jump in and just see what's been added inside this area. So let's go to our curriculum. And remember, this is just a normal course. So like I was saying before, because it's a normal course, you can think outside the box with this stuff. You could set up tiered pricing for uh, on a different section for affiliates or for VAs or other instructors. So you can set all this up really flexibly in the system itself. So if we go into the curriculum now, uh, we're just going to have a look in here and you can see that we have a text and a PDF. So we have here we have some downloads. So we've got PowerPoint presentation. We've got virtual summit background, which is like our background we've got behind us. And 
obviously with the summit in there. Uh, support and contact information. So this is e email addresses and things to contact the team. Uh, support material in here. Again, we have more downloads for uh, give or get interviewed for summit background. We have social media graphics all labeled with our speakers. So there's specific ones for specific people, uh, which is good. We've got email announcement templates. So we've given you everything that you could possibly have. Then we have the summit virtual background as well, which is this background that you have behind you. So we get all material in there, support promotional material is in there. Um, <clears throat> of course, we have the training as well. So inside here, we have videos just added. So really, you know, there's a lot of information here and it's done in a really clear way. It's all just like three sections, grab the information you need, download the resources that you need, and that's it, job done. So you can make sure your speakers are in there. Again, like I was saying, you could set this up in your case, if you had a section for VA training, which I know a lot of you do, you have VAs and you send them training information. Think about just setting up a hidden course, a secret course, and then just enrolling them in there saying, have a look at that material. Then you haven't got to repeat yourself over and over again when you hire more VAs uh, or you change VAs. So it makes it really easy to manage them. Uh, you could do the same with affiliates as well. So you could give an affiliate speech in one of the sections and then you could just break that same one course up to in different tiers. Now, of course, you could set up a course for affiliates and for VAs as well. So this is a way that you could use it if you were not just doing it from a summit point of view. If you were just doing it for a business, for your courses or your membership site, you might want to set that up as a resource way of doing it. I think that's a really good idea. Um, Alice just went ahead and did that. So I wasn't really involved in this side at all. And um, and I think that works really well. It's definitely, um, I'll definitely be doing that in the future. So I didn't think of it. So it's really good that Alice put that in there because I was like, oh, that's great. That could almost be a training series in its own right. So let's jump back to courses now. I'm going to have a quick look at the Facebook page to see if there's any questions coming. Let me just close that down. So I'll probably edit that bit out that I didn't have the um, screen share. None of you noticed, nobody watching. Say hello if you're watching. <laughs> okay. Um, right. So back to screen share. Let's have a look at the summit itself. All right. So we've looked at the speaker information resources. So you can see it's a simple course. It's all broken down. We manually enroll the people in there, the speakers in there. They get access all the information we want them to have, plus contact details. Um, we talked about that already. So that was all covered in the planning stage, but that's how it's put together. It's something very simple, easy to put together. So let's move on to the virtual summit now. So let's go into Zenda Live Impact Summit, and we're going to have a look behind the scenes. So <clears throat> let's start with the course details. So um, Subtitle, course title, URL, pretty easy stuff. Um, all this is turned off apart from course pr progress between lessons, which we really didn't need on, but we've left it. We've got our author in there. By the way, if it's a different author, you can click in there and choose the author. Um, so if Alice has done this, for instance, because I did this, this part here, but I made Alice the instructor on there because she was hosting the event. You can easily change it over or even add to it if you want to in there, okay? So that's how you can just add a new order and click update and then it's done. So let's have a look at the pricing. So we're gonna jump through a little bit. Summit registration, obviously it's free. You would probably set that up with pricing. We didn't have any drip. 
we don't want to drip the content out but again if you think about it you could if you had recorded content you could do a drip structure on some of it as well so automations is a big one that we're going to get to uh we're going to go to the pages first of all and just have a look what's been done inside here and uh let me just go and preview these pages then we're actually going to edit and i'll show you so we're going to click and preview this page this is that first page that you saw uh down here it's just all of the speakers inside here and then we can go to the checkout page you're going to notice that this is all formatted um, to look nice with this banner thing at the top even the thank you page has been formatted as well so we just went in there and put that banner in the top and then finally um, the really really important page which is the course access page so course access page we set this up with the sessions to be really easy for you to follow so uh, there when we initially did this there was no replay in here this has been added afterwards so after the session's finished a replay goes in there so that if people have registered because there's over 500 people register then if they come here after to watch it they can just go to that replay and watch it and you'll also notice that live lessons have been put in between 9 a.m., 1 p.m., 1.15 to 5.15, 5.15 to 9.15 for the evening session. So we've got three sessions in there. So it is three sessions. There are limitations with Zender as far as the extension that we can do on the live. So we could do a maximum of four hours, but we have a quarter of an hour at the end. So it's four hours, 15 minutes. So we had to be very careful about session time and that people were hitting their session times so that the whole thing ran over. If we had too many questions at the end and it had run over the 15 minute uh, extra time that we had, then the live would have cut off. And we certainly didn't want that. And plus, because there wasn't much of an overlap time between only 15 minutes between the first morning session, afternoon and afternoon and evening. Again, that would be too close for people to jump into the live as it starts for the next session so timing was a critical thing with this now if we could do eight hour sessions inside zendla it would be better for us because we could run that right the way through them but it was kind of seamless because people knew you could book your spot jump straight into the next one at the end of the session alice would say right now we're finished jump into the next live and she would like take you through it so you could just jump in there it also meant that if people were just turning up for the um, afternoon session they could just turn up for the afternoon session because they didn't have time uh, or they could turn up for the evening or the morning so it gave them the flexibility of jumping out not that they couldn't have jumped out anyway but it just gave them that bit of time uh, but it didn't mean back-to-back -back running of lives which doesn't sound like it's complicated but it is you know it is you've still got to you've got to get someone to start it while you're live you can't stop the live and start the live instantaneously so by having team members there we could do it simultaneously one person could start the live another person could stop the live and then you could flow flow for it like that so teamwork here was absolutely essential and that's where mammy and liz backed up alice brilliantly on that um, going through those things so let's go in and have a look so that's the pages let's go into the curriculum and what you're going to see in here is it's very simple um we had this session here so it was just a morning session just told you about what's going on uh told you the the people that were talking at the start then you'd move down to book straight into the session so if i go into the curriculum i'm just going to jump through this before I go to some of the drafted content that was drafted so you're not going you're not seeing this drafted content this is only for me because I'm logged in as admin so this is what you saw it's now ended but they just click put their spot jump straight into the live and then once this one closed they then jump into the next one and look how clear it is so Alice has made this really clear for people to see what's going on by putting in their times and following it on but notice that alice has not put the end time and this was done on purpose because what she wanted to do was give them a little bit of time she could easily run the next one in but to give it a stop time and a start time is like 
it's a little bit harder. Like if they finished like 10 minutes early, then Alice could talk for 10 minutes before the next one popped up. So she's allowing herself time. So by making it a little bit more flexible for herself to handle uh, the actual summit day, which is a really good, it might be like a little thing that I pointed out there, but that's a really good policy to have. That's a really good idea that just give yourself a little bit of time because you can easily talk a little bit about what the person did before if they've jumped off. Um, but you can't, if they overlap, that's going to cause a lot of problems. And it was all about stopping this overlapping happening, which I'm sure Alice will talk about later. Uh, Alice, feel free to, to pop up if you want to um whilst i'm going through these things so these are there and now obviously the event's finished so replays have gone in yeah so this was this was uh the morning session and this was put in there i think a day later uh, we managed to get it up on there and we also have replays for all the session days so there you can see jim is there and starting on that session because he started here and that runs through and then we had a replay for the last section which was our Zen the panel. Then we had Honey on, Laura Lai, Laura, and then the Zen the team. So we had all of us. I think that's probably the first time we've had everybody on the team. I might be wrong, but I think so. Uh, so that was really good. That's yeah, really I think special. you're right. It was, wasn't it? I think it was the yeah. first time ever. <laughs> which is really nice. Yeah. So... Uh, yeah, so um, that's there. So uh, what I want to talk about now is I'm going to jump into what we've called overflow stream. Now, this is going to be quite techy, but I just want to I'm working on a tutorial that you can implement fairly easily. So what we decided was if we had more than 500 people coming in, there's a problem. Now, this would be we didn't have to do this because it's a free event, you know, so it's like you book your spot. If the spot isn't available, you can't come in. As simple as that. But if you were paying, it could become a monumental nightmare. Um, so we were thinking, that's actually Kevin's idea. We were thinking, how could we sort of do a live stream into your Zenla lesson? Uh, how can we run a live class and at the same time run a stream into another lesson that's a stream of that end of the class? So Kevin was saying um, ages ago, and I never even thought of this, to be honest, that um, what about doing it? Um, why not do it on YouTube? Why not uh, stream it into YouTube? And I'm sure you could you could use some embed code in there. Uh, so it got me thinking and running quite a few tests with the team, like how we could do this. And it actually turns out it's really easy. And this is why I want to do a uh, event for you. So by doing this, what you're doing is you're actually streaming without needing to book anything on your site. You're able to stream in through YouTube straight in to your Zenless site. So you have to put block code in there that you can generate from YouTube. So the actions, I mean, it was a little bit more complicated because I was using OBS, but um, you could do it directly. So what you could do is you could open a Zoom session up, you could stream that into YouTube as unlisted, okay? And then you could then take some code and you can put it straight in to a Zenla lesson, which means what will happen is the Zoom will run, it will stream into YouTube, which will be playing, but unlisted, so no one will see it. And then from there, YouTube's code will go into your Zenla, your, uh, Zenla lesson or even onto a page, right? So not just in a lesson, but into a page. What does this mean? This means that people will be seeing a live stream on your website, so they'll be staying on your website. Um, you could... Also tie that up that if people were on the if seeing it on the YouTube, if you decided to open it up as a public stream on the YouTube, people could comment on the YouTube in chat and you could reply to them. So this is a really interesting way of working. Now, if it's unlisted, it means it doesn't show, but it doesn't mean that 
people might not find it. So if you're charging, it could be a potential problem because if people are sending out, but it could be a way of you doing uh, a stream without having to anyone to register. So that got me thinking about different ideas of doing that. So we tested it out with this. The first one went a little bit wrong, but that was due to a technical problem with OBS um, not working on the sound coming through. But the second and, thir uh, second and third one worked perfectly, seamlessly, in fact. Uh, but it was using a lot of um, data, a lot of stream data through my computer because I was also on the day on the summit itself and I was streaming through. So my video, I noticed my video wasn't as clear. If you look here, it wasn't as clear as it is now where it's crystal sharp clear. And that's because so much was going on. So what did I have to do? I had to do a little bit of an upgrade issue because I changed my um, high fiber to really fast fiber so it's now up to 700 megs so it's going to be crystal and i can do multiple streams out It'd be no problem now but there are certain things that you need to do to make sure that everything's running as it as it should so that is how we did it inside there so if i go into here you're going to see that i've got what's called overflow stream and there's a lot of code in here and i'm going to do a tutorial on it but I just want to show you what it looks like in the platform. So if I go to the overflow here, uh, this block at the top, if the live had have been full, okay, 500 people join, then I was going to put this top block, that's this blue block here, into the live here. So people would have clicked book and they would go no all books all spots are full but they would have seen this big banner here saying watch the live stream so they would have then and you can see it's showing in here uh they would have then jumped in to this overflow lesson that wouldn't have this top block and it would say you're watching a live stream from the event please note no participation so it said that except for youtube so i've given information there so if i did get full we're covering ourselves by having a live stream going in anyway. So pretty novel idea, pretty interesting idea. And this was one of our backup plans for if we were too full. Now we're gonna talk about later how other backup plans, but this was quite a big one to try out inside here. Now we never reached 500 people coming in. Uh, as you generally don't get massive you get lots of people register for free events but actually people attend can be quite low because it's free uh, if we were charging then i'm sure everybody would have been in there so it's something to think about if you're charging for a summit or any kind of live event there is a way that you could get people in i mean you could you could actually do if you think about it you could actually do this as um okay so these people have paid but i want i want people that can't participate now to pay a second price so they can just watch the event but they can't participate in any way so maybe that would be a tier two pricing that you could do for this so these are the things that you could do um if you wanted to so i thought that was a really amazing thing to try out for this it was very successful it worked and we were happy with the result as you can see there we've got john playing the banjo at the end of that session and so, so this is the live stream this is running in from our um youtube channel and you can see they're all there so that was running through so we're, we're running the zoom we've got our participants in there we're recording it we're also sending that Zoom session through to YouTube, through to Zendler. And uh, pretty amazing. I was actually pretty impressed. I mean, I know that my video quality wasn't the best because of the stream thing, but actually it working and um, going pretty seamlessly for um, two four hour sessions. It was uh, it was pretty and even the first session worked fine. It was just my sound wasn't coming through. So to actually stream it for that amount of time, I thought it was pretty amazing, actually. So that's what I was going to do. I was going to take this top block. If it became full, I was going to put it in there. That top block would have let, led back to this lesson and then they could have watched it there. So we had that overflow covered for that side of things. So, yeah, we didn't have to use that, did we, Alice? So we were kind of lucky with that one. So let's proceed now to the automations part. So 
I'm going to jump across to the automation. I'm just going to check the Facebook group. <laughs> right, Kyla's put in, you guys are pioneers of uh, New Zealand. It's the most important aspect and why I rate the platform so highly. Oh, thank you, Kyla. Well, Kyla, I know that you're you're quite a guru and techie yourself. So that's uh, praise indeed. Yeah, I think you're, um, I mean, I know, Kyla, you, you can do these kind of things. So actually understanding what I'm talking about now, it's probably a bit clearer for you from the tech side point of view. So just think about that. Think of, I mean, you can test it out. You can just try it out yourself. I'm sure there's other ways we can stream because underneath the Zoom settings, you've got custom stream settings. So maybe you could send it through something else and then onto the page. Um, maybe StreamYard or something. I don't know. I haven't checked into that, but it's it's definitely, and that's what I love about it. Like with Zenly, you have this option to use custom code and that's what we've done. We've just included the custom code there. This is the code that is used to stream into the event. This code, I didn't write this code. I just grabbed it from YouTube, put it in here. Okay, I made a little bit of a change with the um, um, height and the frame width, but that's all I did. And then it just works straight out the box. So that was all good. So let's move on to automations. So the automations are quite a lot going in here. So we had, this is the summit. So we got the access, we've got three days out reminder and a day before, and we have, I don't think we sent any out afterwards. I think manual ones were sent out afterwards, but these are just here. So very simple inside the summit. Um, when I run some of the challenges I run, I sometimes put quite a lot of emails. I think the last one that Mammy what, uh, ran, which is the optimization, the, the three-day optimization, she did quite a lot of um, different automations going out at different times. Um, that was quite interesting. But notice that we've got this mail going out. So this is backing up the lives. So we got this going out straight away. You need to book your session. We were all about and we had feedback from you guys on this. It's like people were missing booking their sessions. So we kind of harp on about it a lot uh, because people were missing out on some of the challenges because they weren't booking the spot. So it's something that we mentioned a lot inside here. And we have even have a link going straight to that um, lesson inside. By the way, if you want to know what the lesson URL is, some people um, don't know this, but if you wanted to, uh, for instance, uh, go to this lesson and you want to use a button to do that. All you need to do is preview the curriculum, uh, click here, then you can copy this URL at the top and you can put that on the button. That way when people are in the course, like the course access, if they hit that button, they'll go straight through to this lesson. You'll notice this M part changes as we move to a different lesson. So it's a unique URL that is generated here that you can actually add into email automations or onto a button a little bit of a tip for you there on there so we did talk about this we talked about live the schedule again um alice and then we had three day out reminder so this reminder went out um three days before there we go you can see it's on so we've got a time we put on because three days out on and we put that in there again there's a link it says the name so there's personalization in there and you've got the checkout and the mailing address so we preview that in there you can see there uh do, 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 do. so it says alice there. i'm logged in as alice so that's the um personalization that we've got there okay so that goes out three days before and then we've got a mail that goes out a day before as well so inside there, do you want to save changes? No, I don't. Doesn't matter, I haven't done anything. Okay, so this is going out a day before. So it's like tomorrow is the big day. Are you ready? And we give a list here. So check the schedule, remember. So it's just reconfirmation of everything we're doing. So what I want to do now is I want to jump into the, um, the lives that were attached to this as well. Because remember, we just used live lesson type, then we selected the particular live um, class that we had. Now we used that. This was a big debate. We, so, do we use live webinars? Do we use live interactive webinars? Do we use uh, live classes? At the time, one-to-one uh, -one bookings weren't there, but it's probably something we never would have um, put in there anyway. 
so there was a, a there was a decision between like live classes are good because they have interactive elements so you can talk to that you can have people have their camera on but we were running a summit which traditionally right summits are done in a kind of webinar a true webinar experience the summit speakers come on but communication is done all via the chat but we didn't have that we wanted to be able to put it into a course so to put it into a course we needed really to use live classes because otherwise we're losing them from the class if they want to go in there so we could have used live webinars. Um, the, we didn't even look at live interactive webinars because basically that's the same as live classes. It's just live classes go into the course that we set up. So, but we were looking at live webinars. Should we give them that that true webinar experience, or should we have the ability to be able to uh, see them and talk to them? You know, talk to the participants, uh, which is nice to be able to do. We didn't end up talking to anybody participants that were on there but we could have so what we had to do to stop them from putting videos up or being able to do unmute their microphone was under the zoom settings under the security we just locked down what they were able to do meaning they were only able to chat so that's what we did so we created that kind of live webinar experience by doing that locking it down so it was balancing whether we wanted to go true live webinar or whether we wanted to go the interaction route. We decided on the interaction route because we thought it'd be a lot more seamless going through the course and adding in there. And there was a, quite a big debate on that, what we should do. And in fact, we only kind of made our mind up maybe a week or two before. So that's how quick you can implement these things in there. Now, what I want to say also is what I haven't said to you and you haven't seen is we launched this. We set the branding up. The first thing we did was we set up the course card. And when we set the course card up from it, from that course card, we then had the style to be able to create the look and feel of the summit. OK, so that's the first thing we started. Then we moved there. Now, this was very early on. And, at, you know, we hadn't even gone through that. We knew what we wanted to do, but we didn't have the planning all in place. Alice had to spend a lot of time planning and strategizing, but we didn't want to lose people. Um, we wanted to get the communication out as soon as possible that this was going ahead. We didn't even have a date. So what we did was on the sales page for the summit, we actually deleted the information out. We deleted the ability to be able to sign up for it. We just removed it. We hadn't even put a pricing plan in. So we replaced that all with a pre sign up form. So we just created a simple form. Now, when people signed up, they were tagged with Summit, interested in Summit. And then uh, what that meant is that we you could, even before you've planned, set up your lives or even done any work on the curriculum or sales pages or anything else, you could set one page up, the sales page, put a form on there pre-enrollment form and i've done tutorials on this probably a lot of you know already that way you can promote that page so you're already before you've done all of the months of work leading up to this you can already promote it you could already do google ads you could already do facebook ads you could do whatever you like you get tell your friends and family come in join me you can get everybody in there now on the pre-sign up form so then we worked on all of the stuff and got it all done and tested it as we do. And then what we did is we replaced that pre sign up form with the checkout form. So people go through. So it then returns to a normal course. So all the people that have already signed up for it have not been added to the course yet because they've just simply filled a form out and been tagged. So what we did then was we just went to filter the tag for what they've been tagged with. We use bulk actions and we automatically enrolled them straight into the summit. So when we enrolled them automatically into the summit, all of our automation is just fire out to them. So they know that it's going ahead. We also did an announcement on Facebook and all this sort of stuff um, out, you know, on YouTube, all of our social channels. So it was, you know, broadcast everywhere. Those people though, that had pre-signed up were already in, bang in one big bunch and then anyone extra coming in can then go through that checkout process and then they'll be entered in there so that's how we did it so we you can actually and you can do this with courses as well i mentioned this do a 
it's got a course if it's a big course it can take you six months to do set the sales page up with a pre-sign up form with a tag uh, work on your course in your own time and then when it's done you can then reach out to those people right the course is ready come in there pay for it now and then they'll go through it now it's slightly different because you won't bulk enroll them in it because you want them to pay for it so you'd send an email automation out based on that filter tag whatever it may be so that is how we kind of rolled with that side. So if we look at the lives now, I'm going to jump back into the um, into here. You're going to see that we have the three lives. They're set up in here and they showing as completed. So these are live class types and these live class types were put straight into the lessons. So we had live type, live class type, and then we put that straight in the lesson. Let me just open a new tab just to show you. And just in case you don't know about the lesson types, that's going to the speaker, into the summit, into the curriculum and lesson type. Really easy. Add a lesson. Must remember to release this out. Live lesson type. Click there and then you select your live lesson. Now that we haven't got any because they've all finished, but you just they just appear in here and you just click it. And then they become a live lesson type in there, just like this one here. Yeah. So really easy to work. Let me just delete that out so that I don't annoy people that are in there. OK, good. So that's how we did it. So we had a three. We dropped the lesson type in there, connected up to there. We had that overflow thing underneath just in case too many people were coming in. And if there were, I was going to copy that block, put it in the lesson. People could jump into the overflow. Uh, we had the replay set up. So when it finished, we uploaded the replay straight into that page so that people could watch it that hadn't watched the live. So that's how that was set up. You've seen the basic automations inside the course itself, uh, which Alice set up in there. And we've got our three lives there running different times, 5.15, 1.15 and 9 a.m. So if I click into this now, you can see that we had a maximum registrants 500 there. I'm going to jump straight to we didn't have any pricing set up on this. Uh, we got our live class details inside there. We got our pages in there, which again, these were all, um, we didn't even care about formatting these because people were coming straight in the live class. So we didn't really care too much on that because no one was going through this. It's, it's just the normal formatting. We didn't do anything special. So if we jump to the automations now on this, you're going to see that automations fly out uh, based on a one hour before. So we had the live class. So when they booked, they got an email saying confirmation, you've been booked in morning session, blah, blah, blah. So let's have a look at it. And inside here, yeah, you're booked for morning session, live summit. If you want to register afternoon session, go to summit access page. So it's telling you all the time. This is the key thing. Communication. Not too long winded, really to the point. No, we haven't even put any images in this, um, which we normally put something in there, but we wanted to make sure it's just plain text, maximum deliverability, reliability by using plain text. So that's all we did. So they're pretty much the same. All these emails are the same. We did the first, Alice, we did the first one, then Alice cloned the second one, third one, then put them into the course in order. And she checked through, just make sure they're right. So you can see you've got the app, you've got the calendar, you've got the topic, the schedule, the join link, you've got the name. If I just preview it, so they're taking the name, summit access page will go to the summit access page, and the join link for it is there as well. So if I was to click this, it's going to take us to this access page where you'll then book your session. So what we're trying to do is we're trying to reinforce at least two to three times where you need to go you know you know for a fact that someone will only remember your name if they've met you three times and you've told them your name then that's the highest chance of someone remember your name they won't remember your name if they've met you once or twice unless you make an impression with them okay so that's generally how it runs so we're trying to reinforce a message a minimum of three times and that is to book 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 you know so you're not forgetting these things.
So the next one we've got here is the um, sequence. This goes out one hour before. So we weren't bombarding people with emails, but we were giving them enough emails so that they knew. And we were telling them to join the class. You know, it's happening in an hour. You join the class. Uh, notice also no specific date times in there. We talked about earlier, if, if Alice was to put a time in there and someone's clock had changed, then it would be a different time. So she's covered herself there on that front um, to do. So I'm going to have a look at the Facebook group. No, we're fine. OK, good. So and that is it. That is how we set it up. So some things to take take away from what we talked about in in the morning session is that even though what the team was talking about as far as planning and strategy. Still, you can start to promote something that you've got a set date for pretty much straight away. You could have a sales page up in less than an hour, um, a good sales page in less than an hour, and you could start promoting it before you've even got people in. Now, it's different because obviously with if you've got speakers, you're going to want to tell people about the speakers. But if it's a warm list, if it isn't a cold list, a lot of people will want to sign up for it straight away. If it's free, you can you know, it's free, so they'll come in. But if it's paid for, you might want to give them a brief indication of what it's about. So even you might not have the speakers lined up. So you might say, we're going to talk about everything to do with uh, Instagram marketing. And we're going to have some special guests in, you know, a minimum of two or something. So you can be vague, but you can tell people what it's about. And they might buy into that. You can say, look, if you don't want to buy into it now, um, and you could, do, you could do the old usual marketing trick, early bird offer that always gets people <laughs> gets people in um, but as you start to get a speaker that's competent in what they're doing then you can start to add them into the page using the editor and then it can start to get filled out so you can sort of build that first part as you're planning as you're setting up speakers and all those things you can start bringing them into the platform to make it more of a marketable um, summit or whatever you're running so like i said with the page builder for instance if i'm jumping into the course i'm going to jump back to the course i will be screening screen sharing in a second uh, i'm not going to make that mistake again uh, let's jump into the page okay all right so uh our sales page for instance if i come into the editor just something I want to touch on with the pro and premium plans that you have the ability to save blocks out because it saves a lot of time by saving blocks. So once my editor loads, or which is right now. Okay. So saving blocks here we go so saving blocks can save you a lot of time i mean if if i was if we were running another summit what we could do is clone everything that you've seen so far uh it would make it really really quick we could change some of the graphics over really quickly and just have a completely new branded style um it wouldn't take long at all once we've got the information in there. So that's the plus thing. If you are running, if you are planning to run lots of these, then the second time you run it will be probably half the time. Your, your, all your time would be put into planning and strategy. That's that's the only part. This is actually working in the platforms really quick. So what we did here is you're looking down here under the custom blocks that we saved out. And you're going to see here is a custom block. So we also saved a custom block for uh, the speakers as well. So I, we were designing this before we had the speakers in there. Yeah. So that was put in there so that we could then swap that out, save that block out and use it in multiple places. So we also had an upcoming summit 
that was part of the uh, form for people to go in and sign up for. So we had that in there as a block so we could remove that or reuse it later on in another summit that we're running. So you'll notice like at Zenla, we reuse a lot of content. We, it doesn't look the same. You wouldn't even know that it was the same content, but it's just changed a little bit. Like some of the top elements are changed around. We were also looking at how does this look uh, mobile wise as well? You know, how are things forming in, in a mobile? view so if we went to like a tablet view how's it look how's it look in a mobile view we had to make sure that all of that looked nice as well which it does so and you'll notice the blocks are moving we didn't use a single image for this whole block we broke this block into individual images so that everything blocks down so it looks good in in on a mobile this should be the common practice that you're using so many times i see uh, sites where people have put massive great banners along the top. I mean, look at Natalie Mason when we looked at her site. She was using it as a comp, but a lot of people do that. They put the, the banner right along the top. So when it comes down to a mobile, it's about that big. You can't read it because it comes right down. Whereas when you've got a tiling asset that happens like this, then you're going to maximize the screen space on the mobile device because it's tiling under the, under each other and you're making sure that it looks good on a mobile device as well. So zenla has got that built into it. Uh, a lot of people that have trouble with mobile is just because they're not designing it properly for mobile. That's that's the reason. There's no, there's no polite way of putting that, really. It's just you need to know the system and how things are working. That's why I spent quite a bit of time uh, doing tutorials on the responsive behavior of how the Zenla system works, which is kind of a bootstrap system. It's a pretty common uh, layout uh, uh, framework for how responsive sites work. Zenla is no different. It uses the, the common format for that. So we swap those out. It'd be easy to change this over. We just put the blocks in. Uh, this blocks, as you can see, this is a square image. I got a square image and we just put a frame around it. So I made the... Um, border width if i change this to like zero you'll see that it will go square but i put a corner radius of 500 on there so it goes round so you're and it's got a border color so you could change that color over like that quite simply so all these things pretty easy to do what i generally do is i clone this then i swap an image out for a new image and you get a new face this is an easy way of working so you go in here and i grab someone else's face in here let's grab mammy so there you can see mammy it's gone in there and then i would shuffle this over to the right block that's how i work with it it's very efficient it's very quick so like i said actually putting this together itself is the easy bit yeah uh setting up your automations that's a really important part you spend a lot of time on making sure that all works but actually setting the site up once you've got that initial course card of how it looks um, it's really quick to work with. So when I say the initial course card, I mean the, um, let's just click and save and preview this. The initial course card, which would be this. Now we're going to look at the social media assets a bit later in the afternoon session. So this is the how the course card kind of looked. And then we built the whole site off the back of that. And of course, we checked that it all worked responsively as well inside the platform to make sure that responsive elements were working like this yeah the menu was working etc so that is how we did it guys so hopefully that has been of interest to you see there's not too many people watching but it is a friday and it is lunchtime so i guess a lot of you are on holidays because it is the bank it is the um holiday time isn't it in the uk and um but if you want to put your comments in there, we'll get back to them. So if anything's unclear what we've been talking about, just make sure that you're putting stuff in the um, in the chat there on this on this session, session one. So we've covered quite a lot. Um, we're ready to move into the afternoon session, which will happen in about three hours time. Alice is back with us and uh, hopefully your Internet's a little bit more stable now. <laughs> She's not in the head. Sorry, I couldn't get to my unmute button. <laughs> <laughs> that seems a bit better. Maybe yes, yes, a bit yes. Tired. 
Do you think it was a bit tired? You got. I was um... just going to say my internet didn't have enough coffee yet this morning <laughs> to function you... properly. I guess. Did you pour it in? Did yeah, you pour it, it in? Was pour it in. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So we went through all. You know, we went through how it's all been put together and all those things. And like I was saying, like the the quickest part is that side of it, really, because Zender is really quick to work with, with um, especially with saving blocks. Um, thinking about your automations is critical, isn't it? It really is, because um, it, it, that that personalization, one of the things that really drives me crazy and one of those things that I talked about earlier with that fast food summit model, it really doesn't take into consideration um, really personalizing and creating a positive experience. So as David was going through some of those automations, like the emails that I set up, I made sure that first email said the morning session and hey, don't forget the afternoon session. And then the afternoon session one, I had to go in and edit and I changed that over because as David said, I just, I cloned the live so that the branding just moved across and it was less work for me. And then all I had to do was go into that afternoon one and change, hey, morning session is starting to, hey, afternoon session is starting right? And to get to the evening session, make sure you book in there, right? And so it was just creating that seamless experience and really thinking about it, even depending on how you plan and how you work. Maybe that's to take a piece of paper and hand write out what that flow looks like for you. Maybe it's um, creating something online. Maybe you use a planning tool um, a project management tool like ClickUp or Asana or something like that, where that's where you need to map it out. However that is for you, then map that process out so that you don't forget things because those little details really matter for the experience of that end user, right? That attendee. And you want to make sure it's a positive experience, right? You want to make sure that you're acknowledging, hey, you signed up, we've got it. You know, we're going to take care of you. Stay tuned for this and this, right? And the most important thing I think David also mentioned was that that short, sweet, to the point emails when it came to the reminders, because if you give people too much information, they're, they're scanning. Uh, we kind of had a conversation about that this morning about like reading terms and conditions and things and just default. Yeah, yeah, whatever. Right. <laughs> just moving on and nobody's reading it. And so if it's just really bullet pointed, precise information that they need in that moment, they're more likely to be able to take action on that, right? And and be like, oh, okay, I know what that is, right? Instead of having you reading three paragraphs of text to figure out what is this email about, because you're not the only person in their inbox, right? I think that's another thing. Like we talked about how some people are in their own little world with time zones sometimes. Um, we also have to consider as businesses that we're not the only ones showing up in the inbox. So we're competing with a lot of things. We're competing with all those notifications people are getting. We're competing with the, the emails that are happening and a phone call comes in, it, you know, so the, the short, sweet to the point information you can provide somebody, it respects their time, right? It helps make it easier to remember. So there's a lot of pieces. So yes, the automations that you set up, that process you go through, you want to think about those very thoughtfully. And of course, as David will always tell you, test them, test those automations, to their breaking point. Like, I, like I, we love that. Like, I know David likes to break things, right? We like to test stuff and break it. Like, you know, work fast and break things, right? <laughs> like, that's what we like to do. And the reason is because if we break something, then that is exciting to us because now we can go, okay, how do we make sure that doesn't happen, right? So for us and for you, like, how can we make sure that that process is better for you. And I cannot tell you the number of times, and David, you know, because you've been in the Facebook group from the beginning, <laughs> the people will pop in and be like, oh, I have this thing happening today and it doesn't work, right? Like, it, 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 don't wait until the last minute to test stuff. That's another reason to give yourself the right amount of timing for things because you do need to test it and make sure it works. Don't find out that you set up the payment thing incorrectly the day of your launch, right? Don't find out that your lives aren't going to where you thought they were on the day of your summit. 
you know, don't find out that your email automations aren't working right on the day of your summit. Test it, test it, test it, and make sure it's all set up and working ahead of time. So, so important. Yeah. I know it's, he agrees with me. <laughs> it, absolutely. Absolutely. And it's like the amount of people, it's like all my courses, it doesn't matter. I know, I know my Stripe, I know my PayPal work, I know they do. Um, but if I set up a new course, I still buy the course myself. I buy the course because I want to go through that experience. Yeah. Look, and then I just jump into PayPal. I test them on both PayPal Stripe. So I buy it through Stripe. I'll unenroll, unenroll myself completely. Then I'll buy it through PayPal and I'll go to PayPal and Stripe afterwards. I'll just refund the money back to myself. Not a big problem. So even if it's a thousand pounds or whatever, you that's what you do. Uh, because you can refund it back it's not a it's not a big issue and even if you've got to wait 10 days you're you're going to make a lot of money from this course so you want to make sure that the payments work in not just doing the testing you know the normal testing i add myself as a user i add myself to the course i log in as that user and then i test it and i test the most important part the payment <laughs> without the payment you're and it is, it's like everybody's like, there's there's a lot of people that don't test and they're like, oh, I've got one urgent. I was getting like urgent help, urgent. help, help, <laughs> help, help. I've got one hour till my life starts. <laughs> <Yeah>. like, <laughs> and, you know, and you guys like, yeah. listen, it's we adorable. get it. <laughs> yes, we get it. Like, there's a lot of things to do when you are launching and when you're doing stuff and you're in a hurry and for a lot of you you're those solopreneurs so you're doing all the things yourself and it's like oh I'll just I I don't have time to test that it'll be fine you know but it's going to happen uh, glitches happen um you forget a thing you know going through the process like David said going through the payment process it would let you know oh shoot look I got the generic checkout page I forgot to edit that bit let me make sure I do that so it's not just that you're able to see that your payment went through and that process went okay but you're seeing the pages you're seeing the process um, that your clients that your audience is going to go through when they're in there and you'll find things to be able Ooh, let me fix that one let me fix that one happens all the time yeah um, uh, every every time every time i do something it's kind of like oh you know it's like today with a screen share it's like oh no i did it again i did it again <laughs> <laughs> i haven't done it for so long i was really proud of myself uh but that was like jumping from one screen to the other normally i would have it i would just be on the screen so it's, it's a lot easier but there you go co-host like alice popped up david you need to share your screen and <laughs> it's telling it again <laughs> so but it's all right and it's how you handle it it's like well it's not going to stop me it's okay so i'll recap you heard a lot of what i was saying so i'm just showing you around anyway it's not a biggie um it's free but if you were people were paying for it i'd need to make sure all that information was covered i need to make sure and that's why if if i if i was charging out i would make sure that i've got a bullet point so if i missed any i would go back even to the point i might say to where did you use, where did you lose me i've done this in lives before where i've not shared and i've said like where did i show up to and then people tell me and then i just go back to those bullets and start again might add more time on for me but it's my fault and i've got to make sure that the people i'm sharing information with are getting the full picture and not just part of it so again, Absolutely. mistakes happen. It's all right. It's, it's you know, it's it's all part of being live, isn't it? Anything could happen live. Anything can happen <laughs> Any, live. Anything. Anything. And and again, it may be that we're spoiled here at Zendler with like the best members ever. It could be that. But I truly believe in the big grand scheme of the world, we see we tend to see a lot of negative stuff, but people are gen generally, I think, um, very understanding when problems happen, uh, especially if you yourself are transparent. And again, because it's relatable, you can make mistakes. Obviously, you know, part of the planning process, part of the testing is to reduce the amount of mistakes, right? Because if it's mistake after mistake after mistake after mistake and all of that's compounding, then that just creates a really unprofessional um, appearance. It also creates um, just like 
obstacles for your attendees, for your audience. And it's just a bad experience all around if it's mistake after mistake after mistake, which is why you plan to reduce that amount, right? You know, nothing's perfect. We're human, technology glitches out. Like no matter how much you plan and prepare, something is bound to go wrong anyway. There's bound to be a glitch in the matrix. It's going to happen. However, you can reduce the amount of it and um, it does make you relatable. You can tell your audience, see, this is what happens, especially like when you're coming from that B to B, you know, because Zendler, we deal with other businesses, business owners, course creators, um, instructors, teachers. So you all have businesses. So you get things happen. And so you're, you can be understanding to us if a little thing happens here or there. But if it's this constant incessant mistake and this is wrong and that's wrong, you'd be like, what the heck are they doing? Right. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. you know, we, you plan so that you don't have to stress on the day of, right. You, you, you test, you plan. It's always a good thing to do. Always. Yeah. And in lives, you, you're going to, I mean, not anybody that's, that's, that's done lives, they will have had mistakes happen. Every single live, you could pinpoint a mistake that happened. Every single one, uh, if you were looking at it through a fine tooth comb, you know. So there is no such word as perfect. You know, you're always trying to get better at everything you're doing and eliminating as many things Progress. as you can, for sure. But Progress. also, but the most important thing to make sure that is working that you really in a way have no excuse about is what you're sending out to people and what they're buying and making sure that that side of it works because it is it's, well it's the most important thing you won't be in business if your if your payment gateway is not working or hooked up correctly it's as simple as that so people will forgive you even if they bought something and you mess something up on a live as long as they get the information that you plan to give to them if you don't give it to them, then no, they're not going to be happy with you. And they're going to ask for a refund because you've promised something that you haven't delivered on. So that's the main thing. Just be transparent about it. And, uh, you know, it's all fine, isn't it? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> yes, transparency is a big part of being a part of business today. You know, people really need that. That's part of how you're building that know, like, and trust with them is having that uh, transparency. Yeah, I mean... Sure. Yeah. I, th I think it, it relates to like now because of the way that, um, inf you know, uh, companies ram things down our throats and uh, nonstop annoyance from, you know, just calls coming in from marketing companies or people trying to sell you something that now the whole attitude of this never used to happen so bad as it does now. It's just unbelievable now. It's just like bombarded so with that bombarded and we're just fed up and sick to death of us all of us are with this so when people are at you know just transparent about things they say something to you they deliver they do not hassle you then you're going to return to them they're nice people i'm going to return to them i'm going to and i think that's the way it's going i think it, a lot of these big companies need to take note of what they're doing to people how crazy they're driving people and they need to change the way they're doing it because a lot of them are still taking this really bombarding harassing approach to marketing almost brainwashing to that almost to that degree so i think that's all going to change and i think that that's that's something that is that is just, I mean, I've always been, I'm sure you as well, Alice, you know, you always try and be honest and transparent with everything you're doing. It's like, if someone contacts me, will I learn this? If I'm not, if that's not going to be taught to them, I'm, I'm like, no, no, we're not covering that side of things. We cover this, but we don't cover that. I don't say, yeah, of course we will, which is a lot of people would say that and get people just to get, to get sale. people on. Yeah. But that's not good. That's not good for you. You want happy people. You don't want grumpy people on the uh, on your courses, do you? <laughs> yes, exactly. Like, and that also um, sort of it really reeks of desperation when you're just trying to make everyone happy. Get just get that sale. It just has this feel of desperation, which doesn't look good on anyone. You know, like not everything is for everyone and that's okay. Like if this particular thing isn't for them, they'll really appreciate you saying, hey, this probably isn't for you. 
And then when you say this is really probably a good benefit to you, they'll believe you, they'll trust you, and they'll they'll look at that thing more carefully if if they know you've been the kind of person that'll say, no, this isn't for you. And then yes, this is for you, right? They'll trust you a lot more if you do that. Yeah. Yeah. That whole marketing side, it's coming back again to, um, you know, reading contracts and uh, what I do. I don't know if you do this, Alice, it'd be interesting. Uh, What I love to do with products, right. Is I, the first thing I do with adverts on the TV or things that I buy, uh, although you can't see them most of the time, might be my age i'm not sure but um when you get a product i always read the really small fine print that's the first thing i read and on adverts that little bit down the bottom where it says 178 people agreed why 178 people you know 97 (laughs) percent of people agreed what on 178 people they've just manufactured that number to get the highest ranking they could that's the first thing i'm not trying that i'm not trying that hair coloring (laughs) exactly i did well i read everything i'm a mom of a kid that has allergies so i read the fine prints i read and i like i read everything depending on you know what it is and all of that so yeah i'm i'm i and i said before i'm a nerd so I tend to read things. Yeah, it's fun. <laughs> it is. <laughs> All right, it I think is. that's it. We're wrapping up now. Okay. That's We're four minutes past 12, so we'll be back at three o'clock. Alice is back with us at three. So I uh, hope you've enjoyed this first half. It's been quite interesting um, seeing a bit of the planning because a lot of, you know, I wasn't involved in a lot, so it's good to hear uh, exactly what, what went on behind the scenes as as such yes (laughs) so so although we talked about everything it's actually like planning and putting and setting up all these documents and things they did and what was going on i mean i didn't even know like what was happening in in the lives where between the sessions how someone was setting out that that side of things so it's interesting to see because i couldn't see liz i couldn't see mammy taking the speakers in and those kind of things so it's going to be quite interesting this afternoon fabulous thank you alice we'll be back at three thanks sounds good david thanks bye for now everyone see you later bye